Hello everybody, my name is Jedalink and welcome to my Squiggly tutorial. This is an in-depth compilation of everything I know about Squiggly. I'm trying to leave no stone unturned and give every single possible bit of helpful information I can think of from my entire time playing this character. In this guide I'll be going over all of her moves and explaining what you can use them for, giving my explanation of stance charges and stance cancelling, especially stressing what they're useful for and why they're so important, explaining how to build a combo with Squiggly, showing some useful resets and burst baits you can do, and anything else I can think of. What I will not be going over are matchups and team synergy in great detail with characters other than Big Band, simply because I don't feel confident talking about those things. I'm sorry. Disclaimer, I'm not a top player, my knowledge is absolutely fallible, so if there's anything in this video that you don't agree with, or that anything that you think I missed, please leave a comment, I will read all of them. Before I start, I'd like to give credit to Mount Lover, who you may know for making Mount Lover's Ultimate Squiggly Guide. A lot of what I know about Squiggly I learned from his guide first, so if you've already watched his video, there will be some redundant information here, but I believe this video also has a lot of new information and a lot of more up-to-date information as well, simply because the game has been patched several times since and some things have changed. But again, credit to him. I would also like to apologize for my microphone, I know it's not great, but it's the best I have, so I just hope you can tolerate it. So, without further ado, let's get into it! Okay, before I get into the guide proper, I kind of want to just go quickly over my thoughts of Squiggly as a character. So, often in fighting games we think of characters as being in, like, archetypes, right? So, you've got someone like Philia, who is a rushdown, you know, Peacock is his own, and that kind of thing. Squiggly doesn't really fit into any kind of archetype like that. Like, she doesn't have any one single game plan. Like, she can't really rush down. Because, you know, she's, like, kind of not that fast. She doesn't have an air dash. It's like, her pressure's not that amazing. She can't really zone either, because she's got, like, one projectile, which is this. And it's okay, but it's not, like, obviously not, like, a peacock zoning, you know, projectile bullshit, you know. Um, so, what she does have is she has sort of, like, a hodgepodge of miscellaneous tools. She's got like some tricky stuff she can do. She's got like pretty good air to airs. She's got some long reaching lows. She's got like this move, which is kind of crazy. Hits really far. She's got dive kicks. That's interesting. Uh, and then she sort of has like her two main gimmicks, which is she can stance cancel. And she has this sing move, which you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with. So she just has like a whole bag of tricks. And it's kind of like. She doesn't have any one single game plan, but it's more about how you use all of her tools at her disposal to be able to get the hit. And one of the good things about Squiggly, one of her like main strengths is that she has pretty above average hit confirming ability. So like any stray hit that you get, you can pretty much turn it into damage. So that's sort of Squiggly's strengths. Uh, as for her weaknesses, first of all, her defense is kind of bad. Her reversals are not great, like she's got... This move, when you have charge, that's an okay reversal. She also has this move, this requires a meter. This is an okay reversal as well, but it has its weaknesses, like it won't hit airborne characters, because it's a grab. Uh, so, she has like, okay reversals, but not the best reversals. And she doesn't really have great anti-airs either, like, she has this. When you have charge, Dragon Punch is actually a pretty okay anti-air, but, like, as a general rule, her anti-airs are not the best. So, she like, kinda suffers against pressure. And really, like, she doesn't do any single thing particularly well. Like, she can't, like, rush down and vortex you like Philia can, or she can't, you know, lock you down for full screen with, you know, bullshit like Peacock can. But she sort of just, like, like I said, she has, like, a whole bunch of ways that she could possibly get a hit. And it's sort of up to you to make use of them and then get the damage and get the combos. Okay. Uh, the other weakness is that her assists are um, not that good, so you don't want to pick her as an assist character. Like, except for like Center Stage. Center Stage is like the one assist that maybe you would pick Squiggly for because there's some there's some interesting things you can do with it. But as a general rule, Squiggly is not a character that you're going to just pick to, to fit onto a team. You, you, Squiggly is going to be a character that you want to build a team around because she has some weaknesses and her other weaknesses. She's got bad defense, like I mentioned. She is reliant. She needs to have charge to be effective. And this is sort of like, you need assists to be able to get charge. Like, if you... Solo Squiggly is like probably one of the worst solos in the game. Because like, she just can't get charged. She just gets rushed down. And also, she's heavily reliant on meter. That's like her other weakness. So, 
she's like not really a character like if you put her in a team she's like more of a drain on the team than a boon usually but if you build a team around her that's when you can play squiggly effectively so I often thought that squiggly is like a weak character she's like not as good and I think it's like kind of true but you know it's she's only bad if you play her in an unoptimized team if you play in her in like a good team then she's fine uh, another thing is that it's often thought that Squiggly is like one of the harder characters to play. And I think this is like... Uh, I can kind of see why people say that, but I don't think she's really that hard. Like, I don't think her ex execution's hard. Like, I said as I messed one up. Like, I don't think her... I don't think her stance combos are like that hard. Like, they're not like crazy hard, like, you know, Marvel 3, Lightning Leaps or whatever. Like, some people would say that Lightning Leaps aren't even hard. I fucking suck at them, but... Anyway. Squiggly's execution overall is actually pretty, pretty forgiving. Uh, so yeah, so, oh, the other thing is that, like, obviously she has their stances, which is kind of tricky. Like, a lot of her moves are not really obvious the way that you're supposed to use them, and she also sort of, like, she doesn't have an obvious game plan. That's kind of, like, what makes her difficult, more so than her execution or anything. It's just the fact that she has, like, a whole bunch of tricks, she's kind of gimmicky, she doesn't really play in a predictable way, so she kind of requires a little bit more thought to, you know, make work. But... Having said all that, I don't think she's like that complicated. Like when I thought, when I like first started playing Squiggly, I was like, okay, she has stances, right? She has stances and she's considered difficult, so maybe she'll be like Amaterasu in level 3, or like Ganon Street Fighter 4, but she's really not like either of those characters. She's a lot simpler, so she's not that hard. If you're like worried that Squiggly's gonna be too difficult, then I would not worry about that. Okay, so having said all that, we've established that Squiggly is not really a character that you can just put on any team, she's kind of a character you need to build a team around. So you might be wondering, why should I play Squiggly? Uh, there's basically two reasons. Uh, the first reason, maybe you really like her stance cancels, and you think that's like a really fun mechanic, or you like like all the tricks she can do, and you think, you know, she's really tricky, and she's really fun. Or if you like playing like the gimmicky characters with like all the crazy tricks, then that's that's a good reason to play Squiggly. Uh, the other reason to play Squiggly, which is possibly going to be the more common reason, is because she is your waifu. And that's kind of what my reason is. Like, I think she's so cool. Like, look at this. Look at this move. I fucking love this move. Look how graceful she is. Like, if you, like, look at her and think, yo, this is the best character, cutest, best girl, that's why you should play Squiggly. Uh, but, like, if you don't really have that reason, and, like, you don't really care who you play, and you sort of just want to pick anyone, uh, then she's probably not going to be the character you want to play because her effort to reward ratio is not that good. Like in terms of the value she adds into a team, you know, you're better off picking like most other characters pretty much if you don't really have any strong feelings. But if you do want to play Squiggly, well that's what this guide's all about, hey? So I'm going to try to help you learn how to play this character. So watch on. I just want to talk about Squiggly's mobility real quick. Now, Squiggly is one of the characters who is blessed with a double jump. Now, a double jump, since she doesn't have an air dash, this is probably going to be like one of her, m or like probably her main way of, you know, changing her direction in the air. So, like, say you're approaching and then you like decide, you change your mind, like, ah, oh, shit, I need to back off, you can jump away. Or if you're like, you're jumping and you need a bit more distance, you can jump forward. Or if you just want to like, chill out and like maintain your space, you can neutral jump. Uh, so yeah, the applications of a double jump are pretty obvious. Uh, a good thing double jump is for obviously is uh, against resets, like if someone is gonna like launch you to the, into the air and try to mix you up as you come down, you can just double jump away, you know, that gets out of it pretty cleanly. So that's a good thing that Squiggly can do, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, like I said, she doesn't have an air dash, so you can't really use that to approach or anything. Uh, her horizontal mobility is just not really that good in general. She has a forward dash. Forward dash is okay. It's like not amazing, but it's good enough to use, so it's fine. And then her other good way of getting in is with a dash jump. This is probably going to be like either a dash jump or a super jump. A dash jump goes a little bit further horizontally. Uh, super jump goes higher, but not as far. Or you can do a normal jump. Probably, I mean, you can if you want, but. It's Probably a dash jump or a super jump is going to be better in most situations. Uh, one thing you can do with Squiggly is that if you dash jump, then double jump, and do come down with a jumping heavy punch, it will actually hit, it will reach, and then you have enough. You can actually hit with a crouch medium kick and get a full combo off it. 
So you can sort of like jump in from full screen. That is like one of the interesting things that you can do. Uh, if you do it from a super jump, that won't reach. But what you can still do is combo it into super like that. So that's something to be aware of. This is like one of the reasons why Squiggly is good at hit confirming, is that she can like do this. She can just jump in from full screen and get a full combo off it. Uh, okay, so... The other thing she has is she has two other ways, other than her double jump, she has two other ways to sort of control her momentum in mid -air. First of all, she's got this jump medium punch, which pushes her backwards. So, like, in any situation where you need to just, like, back off a bit, you can do that. She also has her dive kicks, which move her forwards. And this is, like, a good way to approach. Or, if you, like, dash jump forwards, but you want to, like, sort of not jump over them, you can, like, dash jump and then dive kick. Instead of, like, dash jump and then, like, obviously it's, that's not going to work. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say with Squiggly's mobility. Okay, let's talk about Squiggly's normals, starting with Standlight Punch. Now this move is her fastest move. It is 6 frames, which means it has 6 frames of startup, and it's active on the 7th frame. This is actually a little bit different in Skullgirls compared to other games, where if we say a move is 6 frames, it has 6 frames of startup, then it's active the frame after. So, yeah. Uh, so anytime you want to use this move is pretty much just if you need to get a move out really quickly. So for example, if you're trying to do like a stance cancel link, this is going to be the easiest thing to link into. If you're trying to combo off a dive kick, this is also going to be the easiest thing to combo into. Because a lot of the time dive kicks aren't that plus. Like sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. It depends on how high you hit. So really, you want to just go straight for the jab, just because it has the best chance of working. Uh, if you're trying to do like a push block guard cancel punish, this is the move you want to do. So pretty much like any situation where you just need to get a move out really quickly, this is a good move to do. Um, it has two hits. The second hit actually has a surprisingly good large hitbox and five active frames, so the second hit's pretty powerful. So this is kind of like one of her respectable options against like a Philia Air Dash, because like, even if you don't get the first hit, the second hit is pretty big, so that has like a lot better chance of stuffing them. But generally speaking, I probably wouldn't recommend trying to beat a Philia Air Dash with a ground normal. It's just like you're fighting a losing battle there, you're better trying to do something else. Um, if you're wondering, should I do the second hit in combos, if you're doing it early in a combo, it's actually better to not do the second hit because it has less scaling. So if you want to do like something like that, that's actually better than doing like both hits. Because it does about a hundred more damage for the entire combo if you emit the first hit, the second hit I should say. But if you're just like trying to get the link and you're just like mashing the hell out of the light punch button and you get, oh my god. <laughs> And you get like both hits, it doesn't actually matter that much. It makes like 100 points of difference, so it doesn't matter. Um, if you watch Mount Lover's Guide, one of the things he said about this move is that this move does not hit on Crouching Philia, Valentine, or Double. This is actually no longer the case because the hitboxes, the crouching hitboxes of every character are now standardized. So this will work on every character. However, it can still be low profile. Like some characters, they're like crouch light kicks or whatever, can low profile this move. And Squiggly can do the same thing with her own crouch light kicks, see? See how like her hurtbox goes really low? So like, if you were in a Squiggly mirror and they did like a crouch light kick, theirs would easily win. Or like most characters really. Or I don't know which characters, but that's something to be aware of is that like, yes, this move will hit crouching characters now, but if they're doing a move, there is a chance that they could low profile it. So it's not really the safest thing to do. But, like I said, it's good for all the things I mentioned. It's just good for like when you need to move it really fast. Uh, next up is uh, Crouch Light Punch. Now, Crouch Light Punch is really interesting. This is one of her like most unique moves, I'd say. Because you'll notice it's completely disjointed, which means the hitbox and the hurtbox don't overlap at all. And you can hold it down and release it whenever you want. For, if you just press it, it's a minimum of 6 frames. Or if you hold it all the way, it's a maximum of 60 frames. Now, this move, it has one particularly very good use, which is that it kind of works as an anti-poke. So, for example, against Fortune, I'll set the dummy to crouch. Hang on. Actually, that's fine. It, all right. So, against Fortune, Fortune's crouch light kick reaches quite far. It reaches further than any of Squiggly's lights. So, if you're at like, this kind of range against Fortune, you're in a pretty awkward position where you can't really do anything 
to like directly beat her likes. So you have two options. You can either go for a medium, and I'd say Crouch Medium Punch is going to be the best bet because it's the fastest. Or what you could do instead is do this move. Because this move, you can just hold it out, and if they try to press a button, it will cleanly beat it. And what you can do is that if you look at the input display, if you just like mash another move like Crouch Medium Kick, when they get hit, the Crouch Medium Kick will instantly come out and you'll be able to easily hit Confirm it into a combo. So this is kind of like the really good use of this move. It's against characters like, particularly against characters who have long reaching lights like Fortune does. That's kind of when I use it. Uh, however, the weakness is that it is her slowest light. It's 10 frames, so it's only 2 frames faster than her fastest medium. So, when you're like at that kind of range that I showed, you kind of just have to gauge for yourself. Should I do this, or should I just go straight for the medium? You just need to like, make your own decision. Uh, next up, Stand Light Kick. The Stand Light Kick is, uh, this move is not really that good. The damage isn't that good, the range isn't that good. It looks cool, I actually like it a lot. You know, she's like, sort of... Anyway. Um... What this is kind of good for is that it's pretty much good for OTGs. This is like the only thing I use it for, or in combos. So like, for example, if you do like a crouch light kick, it sort of knocks them upwards. Whereas if you do a stand light kick, it doesn't really knock them as high. So it becomes a bit easier to like get a resand. Okay, that's a bad example to demonstrate with. But what I do is like, um, if I'm like comboing off a throw, that's like the easiest way to go resand off a throw. Well, let me just try. See, like, if I did the crouch like you can said, it sort of keeps it in the air a bit, which is not as good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what this move is good for. Just use it for restands, use it in combos. And, like, other than that, there's nothing really good about it. Um, crouch light kick. I think this move is Squiggly's best light. Reason being, uh, first of all, it is the longest reaching, I think. And even if it's not the longest reaching, it's effectively the longest reaching, because most characters their hurtboxes, actually not every character, but a lot of characters, their hurtboxes are wider, like near their feet, than up here. Like, especially against Fortune, you can see, obviously, her feet stick out a little bit. So, this is going to be the one to do. Uh, the other good properties it has, it is her only light that hits low. So, if you're trying to, like, start a combo, this is, like, a good one to do, because, you know, obviously, it's going to hit low, whereas the other ones don't. Um, it cannot be low profiled, obviously, because the hitbox is very low to the ground. Like, obviously, this move is a little bit more risky, because if, like, Fortune's doing, like, her crouch light punch... No, I won't demonstrate it, but you know what I mean. Like, this could be low profile where this will never be low profile. Uh, it hits both sides, which is really, like, I don't know when this is useful, but I guess sometimes it will be useful. So that's kind of a good property. Uh, what else? So yeah, those are kind of, like, the reasons why this move is, like, the good light to use, but... It's slower than Jab. It's two frames slower, so it's like... You kind of need to gauge like which one you want to use. Like, if you just need the speed, this is the one. But if you don't need the speed, if you want to hit low, if you want like a little bit extra range, this is going to be the better one to do. Okay, next up, mediums. Uh, stand Medium Punch. Now this move, it uh, you can use it in combos. It does two hits. If you take both hits together, it does the most damage of all her mediums, but for each hit individually, it does the least hit of damage of all her mediums. So you might be wondering, okay, so in a combo, should I do a stand medium punch, or should I do a crouch medium punch? Which is going to do more damage? And the answer is that it works out to be about the same, because this has, like, it does more damage, but it does more scaling, whereas this will do less damage, but less scaling. It kind of works out to be the same, so it's just whichever one you want. I don't think it really matters. Uh, the one interesting property of this move is that if you cancel it after the first hit, See, the first hit like pulls them in, and then the second hit pushes them away. So if you cancel it after the first hit, you sort of just like, they just get pushed in. And this has one really interesting application, is that you can use it to do cross-ups in the corner. If you just do the first hit, then... Ah, oh, I missed it that time. Then they'll sort of go over your head, and then you can just do a light, or throw the back of the corner of like, whatever mix-up you want to do. So that's like a good, one of Squiggly's good cross-up setups. Uh, you can also do the same thing not in the corner. I can do it off of a beat extend. I can do something like this. Okay, I messed it up that time. There we go. So that's like kind of one of Squiggy's good cross up setups. This is like probably the main thing I use this move for. Uh, crash Mini Punch. Now, Crash Mini Punch, this move is not that good because, like, compared to Crash Medium Kick, they're both like sort of poking moves, right? But. 
it doesn't reach as far and it doesn't hit low compared to Crouch Medium Kick, and it also does less damage. So you think, okay, Crouch Medium Kick is going to be better in most situations. Uh, the good properties of this move is that one, it low profiles. Oh shit, I forgot to mention. This move low profiles. I'll actually demonstrate this right now. Both of these moves low profile. So, for example, if I get Parasol, I will make her do a tear shot. Like so. Now, you can't crouch under tear shots, but you can low profile them. Like so. And you can do the same thing with Crouch Mini Punch. So that's kind of a useful thing to do against Parasol. So this move, like like I was mentioning, is that you know how like um, jabs can be low profile. This is something that like Squeaker Squeak can low profile some stuff with this move, and it makes it like a little bit passively safer, I guess. Even if you're not intending to low profile something, some things it will just be safe against because of the low profile. So that's kind of good. Uh, anyway, where was I? Crash Mini Punch. Now this move is it has two good properties. Like I said, it low profiles. And it is her fastest medium, which is like the only redeeming factor for it. Otherwise, like this is most better in most situations. So it's kind of like the safest medium in a way, but also not the best because, like I said, it doesn't reach the furthest, doesn't hit low, but it does low profile. So, like, there are some moves where it will be a little bit safer to do this than this one because this one kind of like her hitbox is sort of still there, whereas this one moves a bit lower, right? And it's also faster, so if you need like a fast medium, this is the one to do. Other than that, it's not really that good, I don't really use it that often. Uh, the other good thing about it is that it's like one of her good OTG options. So that's something you can do with it. Although, you can also use this move as an OTG, and it, this move will do more damage, so you can use either. But it's only like, in any situation where you can't or don't want to use a medium, like because of IPS, you can do that instead, and it's a good OTG. That's about all I have to say about Crash Medium Punch. It's not really that special. It's it's okay, I guess. Uh, moving on to the kicks. So we got Stand Medium Kick, Crash Medium Kick. I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about Crash Medium Kick first. This move is one of Squiggly's best moves. It hits really far. It has really good range. This is probably like one of the furthest reaching normals in the game, aside from like obviously like Titan Knuckle it goes like the whole screen, but this move. Or like Big Band's, you know, Crouch Heavy Punch or Sweep or whatever. But this is, it might be the longest reaching move that you can actually confirm into a full combo. So what you want to do with this move is you do, you buffer it into the Crouch Heavy Punch like this, right? Like that. That's how you combo it. Uh, if you have Charge, you can sort of like get a little bit more damage before going for the Silver Cord. Like that, it's up to you. Because obviously, Silver Cord, it will scale the combo, so if you want to get like a little bit more damage, you can just do that. Or maybe, like, if you're close enough, you can just, you can just do like... Anyway, it doesn't matter. So this move, what you need to know about, it hits low, it is her longest reaching low, other than Sweep. I think actually, I think Crash Mini Kick and Sweep have like almost the exact same range. So it's a really long heat reaching low, uh, you can confirm it into a full combo by doing this. You do the Crouch Heavy Punch into Silver Cord. What you need to know about this move? This move, like, it is really good, but it has two weaknesses. The first weakness is that the hitbox is really low to the ground, so it will never work against an airborne opponent. It's only if they're on the ground that you want to do this. So, like, against Philia, I would just forget about this move. Just don't do it. It's just not worth it. Or, like, maybe if, like, you know that they're going to stay on the ground, but it's it's pretty risky. Um, the other thing is that this move is not a true block string into her heavies, except for sweep. Let me just demonstrate this real quick. Block type, uh, first hit only, right? So it's a true block string to sweep, but if you go like crash medium kick into crash heavy punch, that's not a true block string. Or crouch medium kick into stand heavy punch, also not a true block string. And this is kind of dangerous because, like, if maybe if you're playing against someone who is mashing reversals or is mashing an invincible assist, then there is a vulnerability in between this move and whatever new move you do after it where you could possibly be hit. So that's something you really need to be careful of. Okay, as opposed to stand medium kick, now let's talk about stand medium kick. 
this move, it it does about the same damage. Actually, hang on. Let me just switch, change the blocking back. Out. Um, right. Shit. Hang on. Give me a sec. No, that's not it. Block type. After first hit. Now, this move, it does the same damage as a Crash Minion Kick. It does 650. And it has a, it's about the same speed. It's like one frame difference. It's actually one frame faster. In a combo, these two moves are pretty much interchangeable. So you can do like a stand mini kick, you do a crouch mini kick, same damage, doesn't matter. I guess like the um, in terms of a combo, there are two differences really. Crouch mini kick, it actually moves you forward. See, you're not seeing it now because if you just let the whole thing go, it moves you back to where you were. But if you cancel it, it moves you forward. So if you're cancelling it to any other move, then that will move you forward. As opposed to like, if you do a stand medium kick, it just pushes you away, like as normal, right? So that's kind of the, one of the main differences. This move moves you forward, this move does not move you forward. So if you're doing like stance cancel combos, it's kind of like, you might think it's like a little bit harder to do the crouch medium kick, but it's kind of better because it keeps you closer to them, so it makes the rest of the combo easier to work. Um, okay, the other thing about Stamina Kick is that it is a launcher against airborne opponents. So this is something that, like, it's not really that useful in that many situations, but it's just something to keep in mind, is that if in any situation where you need a launcher and maybe you don't want to use this move or this move is not going to work for any reason, you can also use Stamina Kick. It is a launcher against airborne opponents. Uh, and the thing I was alluding to earlier is that where this move is not a true block string, uh, let me just turn the blocking back. This move is not a true block string. This move is a true block string. I'll set. I'll turn push blocking off. Actually, I don't know why I had that on. Here, okay. This move is. What the fuck? There we go. So see, this move is a lot safer to do. So maybe if like if you're starting with a light, you kind of if you want to do like a block string with a light, it's actually a lot safer to do the medium stamina kick instead of the crash mini kick. Because it was gonna be a true block string. And basically, in, if you're starting with a light, you don't really need the extra range or the fact the, the fact that it is low of this move. So it's a lot better to do the stamina kick if you're going to start a block string from a light. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about her mediums. Now, moving on to her heavies. I'll switch blocking back again. There we go. Stand heavy punch. Now, this move is a damage dealer. The first hit does 750, second hit does 800. So the two hits together do 1550, which is kind of a lot. And basically, this is going to be like, the way you get damage with Squealy is to just do a lot of this move early in a combo. And that's kind of what Stance Council is good for. Like, you can do, you know, something like this, obviously, like I just showed you. Um, so, yeah. It's good for combos. I would not really use it in neutral, for obvious reasons. It's kind of slow. The hitbox isn't that good. It's not really good for you, neutral or anything. It's only pretty much just 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 doing in combos. Okay. Uh, crouch heavy punch. Now this move is interesting. This move it similar to crouch light punch is also completely disjointed. But one of the differences this move you can sort of like hold it and then let go of the button. This move if you just press it it will do the full move. And the only way to make it safer is to cancel it. And that's something that's kind of worth practicing with Squiggly, I think, is just like doing, you know, like this, right? Just do a crouch, quick crouch heavy punch and cancel it immediately. Or you can like, you can control how long you want to have it out for. And uh, if you have charge, it has the normal stance cancel recovery, which is 12 frames. So it's actually pretty safe. If you don't have charge, it has the uh, 19 frames of recovery, which is a lot worse. So this is kind of one of the reasons why it's good to have charge, is you can do this move in neutral and it's a lot safer. Now what this is good for is it's kind of like... I wouldn't like use it in the same way you use Light Punch, but what I would use it for is that like you can hold it out 
It kind of is a good, like, it's kind of like a good poke, like a good anti-approach. Actually, this move also hits low, that's something I should say. Like, these are like her two good lows. This one, the medium kick, it reaches further, but it has the vulnerability that it's not a true block string, whereas if you just do the, the heavy punch to begin with, then you don't need to worry about it. So like, if you need the extra range, then you gotta do the medium kick. If you don't, then you can go, just go straight into hard punch. Um, so yeah, what else have I got to say about this move? So yeah, it's completely disjointed, it is a low, you can cancel it to make it safe. Now kind of situations where you can use this is like, you can just like leave it out for a long time as like a lingering hitbox, or you can like try to make them land on it, like if they're coming down with an aerial, you can like dash backwards and throw it out. This is kind of risky, I don't know, it, it depends, you gotta like gauge for if you can make it work or not. Um, yeah, and it hits low and is a multi-hit, and which is, it has some interesting applications with regards to push blocking, like if the opponent's trying to push block you, the fact that this is a multi-hit makes it a bit better, and I'll talk about that a bit more later. Um, okay, what else? Heavy kick. Sand heavy kick. This move is a launcher. Starts her air combos. I wouldn't really use it for anything else, just don't even worry about it, like... I would not use it as an anti-air, it's not really that good as an anti-air. only use it to start combos. That's about all I have to say about this move. And... Sweep. This is her Crouch Heavy Kick, this is a sweep. It's like an okay sweep, it has pretty good range, like I said before. It's about the same range as her Crouch Medium Kick, so it's not bad. It's actually, like, completely safe because you can cancel it, which kind of, like, a lot of characters, you typically think of, like, a sweep is kind of risky, except for, like, Bellas, which is, like, zero on block. This move is actually going to do positive on block if you cancel it, so that's really good. So this is like one of the safest sweeps in the game. Now, the situation where you use a sweep is basically, like all sweeps, it breaks armor. So if you've got like a Bella who's running at you with her armor, you can just throw this move out and it will kind of stop her. The other thing you can do with this move is that if I set it to max on Dizzy real quick, say you do something like this, You can use it as like a knockdown burst speed, and what this is is that if they try to tech, they will burst, so they can't tech. So you can use it as like, and Max on Dizzy, you can use it as like a true knockdown. So that's kind of really good, that's like one of the other good applications of this move. I wouldn't really use it like as a normal knockdown, like in a normal combo, because you know, they can just tech it. It's a lot better just to do like a sliding knockdown, like this, so yeah. Those are basically the two reasons I'd use Sweep, is to break armor, or as a burst bait knockdown. Another good thing about Sweep is that it's probably one of Squiggly's best moves for punishing assists. And there's like three reasons why. One, it has a lot of range. Two, it attacks on a lot of damage really quickly and can cancel it to be like relatively safe, so that, you know, if the point's gonna be like trying to hit you, you can just get a bit of damage on the assist and then go back to blocking or doing whatever. And three, it also has the bonus effect of it knocks them down, so they'll be on the ground a little bit longer, it'll be slower for them to be called next time. So this is kind of like why, if you want to punish an assist, this is really a good thing to do. It also has sort of like the passive benefit is that, since it breaks armor against some assists like Thelos Lock and Load, this is like the best move to punish it in situations where pretty much nothing else will work. Unless you want to like hold out a multi-hitting move for a long amount of time, it's much easier just to go for this. Uh, be aware, you probably usually you want to just like stance cancel it, right? And obviously it's better to have charge because it'll be faster. But you can also, if you're in danger, you can like cancel it immediately. Whoops, wrong one. You can like cancel immediately into DP if the point's gonna like try to punish you for punishing the assist. You can also punish them back. So yeah, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Now the last move that Squiggly has is forward heavy punch. This move is her overhead. And as an overhead, it has pretty good range. It's like, it has slightly more range than a crash light kick. It's like not amazing range, but it's pretty good. It's also completely destroyed, like her other two flame moves. But this one is, you can see that Leviathan's head has a hurt box, so it's like not as good as the other ones. Um, yeah. And this move, it is a multi-hit. I think this is probably the only multi-hitting grounded overhead in the game, I think, I don't know. 
Anyway, and what you can use this for is that it kind of makes it more difficult to push block. Now let me just demonstrate this real quick. Say I set them to push block. Um, yeah, here, what am I going to do? Block type always. Yep, and push block first hit. Now, in a realistic situation, they probably won't be pushing up blocking on the first hit, but I'm just going to do first hit because it's going to be a bit easier to demonstrate. So, say they're going to push block this move, right? Since it's a multi hit, you sort of stay in their face. But it's like not that good because it's quite negative, right? But what you can do is that you can cancel it because, you know, if you're squiggly, squiggly can stance cancel. That's what she does. So, what you do is say you know that they're going to push block it on the first hit or whatever hit it is. If you then do the second hit, the second hit sort of keeps you in range. And then if you cancel it after the second hit, like that, look at this. So you just did an overhead, they push blocked it, and you're still right in their face. And you can easily do a low. Like you have a lot of frame advantage here. This is like, it depends on how like well you cancel it. It's like a maximum of plus eight. Which means you can do a crash light kick and it's like a one frame freaking block of last you know what I mean it's like a one frame thing so that's kind of one of the good things to do but obviously this does require you kind of need to know when they're gonna push block and you need to either cancel it before they push block so that you can bait the push block or cancel it immediately after they push block so you can stay in their face and sort of like the later you cancel it the less frame advantage you get but it's still pretty good even if you don't like do it completely right and then you can go for a low this is sort of like one of Squiggly's better pressure options, is to like, do the do the overhead, cancel it, and then it's still in your face. So you can do a low, you can do a throw, whatever you want. You can kind of do a similar thing with this move, because this is a low and is multi-hit. Uh, the disadvantage of this move is that, well, this move you can like, do a high into a low. You can't really do a low into a high, because the overhead's just too slow. But what you can do is you can do a low into a grab. So, yeah. Uh, so, overhead. A bit more about overhead. Basically, any situations where you want to use an overhead, you can use an overhead. Uh, this kind of just comes down to, like, fighting game fundamentals a little bit, of, like, knowing when the overhead is going to work. So, like, for example, if you can read that they're just going to commit to crouch blocking, like, maybe if you're, like, in an ambiguous situation where you're, like, about the same frame advantage and you believe that they're not going to press anything, you can go straight for the overhead. Or you can go for a grab. Like, a lot of time, overhead and grab are kind of interchangeable, but overhead is going to be higher reward because it doesn't scale to combo, and it's easier to combo after. Or if you, like, if you do, like, a crouch light kick or any lows, like, any, like, lows and they don't push block it. Uh, let's set push block to off. Where is it? Here. If you do, like, a low and they don't push block it, you can just go immediately into overhead. This is kind of the same concept as, like, a tick throw. Like, if you do, like, this. But you could just do it with overhead instead. Or oh, basically, like in resets, obviously, it's a good thing to do in resets. Um, yeah, that's all about I have to say about her overhead. Now, let's talk about her jumping normals, starting with Jump Light Punch. So, this move, it extends pretty far downwards, and this kind of makes it sometimes useful as an instant overhead. Now, situations where you can use this as an instant overhead, there's like three ways you can make it instant overhead. Is one, against Big Band, it'll always work because he's just so tall that you can always do it. Uh, you can do it on Fuzzy Guard. If you don't know what Fuzzy Guard is, I'll probably put an annotation or you can just Google it because it's a pretty common concept in lots of fighting games. Or if you do an instant double jump, you can also do it as an instant overhead. And I'll put another annotation. But uh, instant double jump. If you play on a stick like me, you can probably just forget about it, because I'd say it's borderline humanly impossible with a stick. Uh, maybe if you, like, have a hitbox or a keyboard, you can think about it, but, yeah. So, you can use it as an instant overhead in some situations, like, see, oh fuck, I didn't turn the volume back on, okay. That's alright, just, uh, let's just pretend that didn't happen, okay. So, um, yeah, you can use the instant overhead in some situations, and the way you would want, you would combo off it as an instant overhead is, uh, it's temp blocking back to normal, is you just want to immediately go into dive kick, right? 
Now just, uh, let me just reiterate that you are seeing this work right now because Fortune is standing. This actually wouldn't work because she would be crouching and it wouldn't hit. So it will, it will only work, like I said, on Fuzzy Guard, on Instant, you know, Instant Double Jump, or on Big Bang. Uh, the other thing you can do is that since it, you can like sort of hit them through while they're standing, is after a restand or any situation where they're standing, you can use this as a burst bait. Now let me just demonstrate this real quick. Like, okay. Like something like that. That's a burst bait. Uh, so that's really the main things about stand, uh, jump light punch. Now jump light kick. It, as opposed to jump light punch, which extends downwards, jump light kick extends outwards. So this makes it kind of a really good air to air. Now I'll set the first I'll put the dummy out of the corner, and I will set them to jump if I can find the option. Yeah. So since this like reaches pretty far outwards, it's a good air to air. And the way you want to convert this is first you want to buffer it into jump medium kick. If you look at the input display, you can see what I'm doing. Like I'm just pressing the medium kick. Obviously, if it doesn't come out, nothing happens. But if you do hit, the medium kick will come out. And then after that, there's two things you can do. You can either do a jump hard kick. Optionally, you can do a dive kick at the end. Like, like okay, that doesn't hit. Like, like that. You can just do the jump heavy kick, combo off that. Or if there's some situation where you don't think the jump heavy kick is going to combo, you can do an instant grave digger, right? And you will always be able to combo off that. So this move is a really good air to air. Now, if you like jump forward with this move as an air to air, it's kind of, kind of committal, like you're a bit vulnerable after it. What you can do is like you can, you can sort of dive kick afterwards, right? And that makes it like, gives you a bit of extra attack and makes you like a little bit safer. Um, okay. So this move, really good Edward. Uh, next move. Crouch, uh, not crouch, jump medium punch. This is kind of like her other really good Edward. So whereas like this one is kind of like the high risk, high reward, this is kind of like the low risk, low reward. And what I'll do is I will set the dummy to stop jumping. I need to get them out of the corner, and I'll set them back to jumping. So this move, you cannot get a full combo off this in most situations, unless the only way is that like if you immediately convert it into like a grave digger. But I wouldn't recommend doing this because the whole point of doing this move is that it's a bit safer because like it pushes you backwards, right? So as opposed to like the light kick where you have to like jump forward and then you're in danger, and then you have to either like jump away or do a dive kick or whatever. This move, it just pushes you back automatically. Now what you want to do with this move is you can uh, buffer it into a jump heavy punch. And this just gets you a little bit of extra damage and it pushes you further away, which is kind of an okay position to be in. But like like I said, it's low risk, low reward. The reward isn't that good, but it's like a lot safer as an, and, um, as an air to air. Uh, okay, next up. Medium kick. Oh wait, no. I actually have more to say about this move. Uh, let's make the dummy stop jumping. Another good thing about this move is obviously you'll notice it pushes you backwards. You can kind of use this in reset sometimes. So like say you do like a cross up like this. This is like one of these basic cross up setups. If I can do it right. Like that. What you do is you can... You can do the medium, uh, the medium punch to switch yourself back to the same side. And uh, yeah, then you just want to like go into a dive kick afterwards. Actually, sometimes if you just saw just then, sometimes the medium punch will cross up, and then the dive kick will be same side. I don't know how to make that consistent, but sometimes that will happen. So that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, the other thing about this move is that you might think, oh hey, it pushes you backwards. It must be really good for burst space, right? Because it's kind of like Peacock's Jump Heavy Punch, which also pushes her backwards, and that's really good for burst baits. This isn't really, you can't really be used like that, because her hand, it has a hurt box, so it, re it like, the hurt box extends too far out, it won't work. But that's okay, you can just, you can do other burst baits, like you can do with her other aerials. So that's fine. Okay, so that's all I had to say about Jump Medium Punch. Uh, medium Kick. Now, the good thing about Medium Kick, this is her cross-up. And basically, you just want to convert it into a dive kick. This is going to be like the easiest way to come off it. As opposed to like, if you do this, yeah, you don't really want to do that. You just want to do an immediate dive kick. 
Uh, so yeah, that's really the main thing that you would use for jump meeting kick for. The hitbox isn't that big. Like, the hurtbox reaches further than the hitbox, so don't really use this in neutral, it's not really good for anything. But it is her cross up, that's what you're gonna know. Okay, next is jump heavy punch. This move is really interesting. So this move, obviously it reaches really far, but as you can see, the entire thing has a hurt box. So it's kind of vulnerable for the entire time. So like, it is good, but it's not that good. Like you can't just like spam it all day because it does have a hurt box, it is a little bit vulnerable. Now this move is kind of like one of her better zoning tools, like if, you, if you're trying to like run away and someone's approaching you, you can like throw this out and that might stuff them. Uh, you can also use this as like a jump in, like as I showed you before I think. You can do that. And the funny thing about this move is that the entire thing hits high. So you can actually, if they're blocking low for some reason, you can actually like hit them with an overhead from the entire screen away, which is kind of funny. Uh, one thing that I will say, you really need to be careful about this move. This is only in one specific matchup that this is going to happen. So I'll switch characters right now. Is I'll go double. And what I'll do is I'll make double do a monster. I'll back off a bit. Now if I go back to Squiggly, if I do a jump heavy punch, it will teleport me into the monster. So that's something you need to be aware of. So, like, if Double's got a monster on screen, do not do this move. You will, you will pay for it. You'll be sad. So yeah, good zoning tool. It's not that great because it's vulnerable. You can use it as a jump in. You can use it as like an instant overhead from full screen. That's kind of what this move is good for. Uh, the applications are kind of obvious. Like, it's got massive range. It's pretty good. Now, hot off the presses, I actually only learned about this recently. Bella can do Accelabella against Squiggy's Jump Heavy Punch and it will teleport her into it. So, that is something that I like, personally, no one's ever done this to me, so I didn't know about it, but I saw a video on Liam's Twitter that, like, you actually can do that. Big Man can also do the same thing with Beat Extend. He can, like, teleport you into it, and he can also grab it with A-Train. So, that is also something you need to be aware of, is that this move is a little bit more vulnerable than I thought, but like I said, no one's actually ever done this to me, so maybe they won't do it to you either, but you should be aware of it. It is kind of unsafe sometimes. Um, now, lastly, is her jump heavy kick. Now, what this move is good for, it is kind of like a good-ish jump in, because, you know, it extends really far below her. Like, so you can, like, do this first and then do a dive kick. You know, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, I, this is probably like one of the best things to jump in with against like Big Band, because if Big Band's going to do like a brass, some what some Big Bands do is they have some like assist that makes their brass safe, and then they just like do brass all day because they think it's safe. But you can just like jump over it, and then this move, since it hits multiple times, it'll break their armor. And then if you ever hit with this, you can just confirm it into a Grave Digger and get a full combo, like so. Uh, the other good thing this move is good for is that uh, I'm using combos to get a restand. So yeah, it's like not that good. It has some limited applications, like particularly against like it hits below her. And then like, like I said, anytime you hit with this, you want to combo into the Grave Digger, and that will confirm it. Okay, that's about all I have to say for Squiggly Use Jump Malls. Okay, let's talk about her throws and her hard tag. Now these two obviously aren't really related to each other, but I'm just putting them in the same section because where else am I going to talk about the freaking hard tag? And it's like something that's kind of, you know, it is one of her moves I guess, so it's worth talking about. Uh, okay, so first of all her throws. In the corner, if you throw someone into the corner, they will wall bounce and then you'll easily be able to combo with it. Just, you just need to OTG them. Actually, what you can do is, you don't need to OTG, if you do a stance cancel, you can do a jab or whatever, and that will make it, you can actually combo them without using your OTG. So this is in the corner. Uh, if you're not in the corner, if you're mid-screen, as you can see, I'll throw them and I'll, they'll go like far away from me, and there's like, I can't combo with it. There's three ways you can combo with it. First, if you have a punch charge, you can do an immediate sing and then it will make them like they were in the corner and they'll ground bounce. But this way we'll always use your OTG because you can't like stance cancel after you've done the scene. So that's one way you can do it. If you have a punch charge, punch charge, 
immediate sing, get the combo. If you have a kick charge, you can do a silver cord, like so. Now this will not work with a normal silver cord. It's a bit too slow. Only works if you have it charged. <laughs> Except against Big Ben. Against Big Ben, you can always do Silver Cord and it'll always work. Just because he's so fat and it will hit him. Uh, so, against like Big Ben, you pretty much don't even need to think about it. You can just always do the Silver Cord. Okay, so suppose what if you have neither charge? If you don't have a punch charge, don't have a kick charge, the other thing you can do is a SBO. And I think the easiest way to combo after an SBO, after like a throw into an SBO, is to start charging a silver cord and then hit them after the last hit. It does five hits, so you need to like count the hits, the SBO. So like, suppose I do this, They're like one, two, three, four, five, and then do it like that. Uh, okay, so that's how you combo off throws basically. Uh, now let's talk about air throw. So I'll set the dominator jump, and that's not it. Here, yeah, jump. Now, as for her ground throws, which you either need to be in the corner, or have charge, or spend meter, air throws don't really have any caveat like that, you can just always do it. What you just want to do is do a medium dive kick, like this. And then you can do anything you want. What I can do, what you do is like... What I usually do is I just do a single stand like kick, and then go into a heavy punch, and then do whatever. Now, if you want to do an immediate reset, what you can do is you can do... You can do a light kick into an overhead, or you can do a light kick into a, like a delayed low. Frick, hang on. Like that. Uh, something to be aware of if you're going to come off an air throw is that you need to do the dive kick pretty much immediately. And uh, this was actually something when I started playing Squiggly, this is something that was like hard for me to do, is that I would get the dive kick, but I wouldn't, I mean, I'd get the throw, but I wouldn't react in time, and I wouldn't get the dive kick. So this might take a bit of time for you to be able to do. Or maybe it won't, I don't know, maybe you'll be better than me. But yeah, you just want to do a dive kick. And you, you don't, you don't, you can't like wait until the throw animation's finished, because it's too slow. You need to like cancel the end of the throw animation to get it to work. And then you just do that. Okay. Now, that's about all I have to say about her throws. Uh, turn jumping back off. Now let's talk about her heart tag. Now, Squeaker's heart tag, the way it works is that she has this little like tombstone on the screen, right? And then whenever you tag, She'll come out from the tombstone. Now, <coughs> Squiggly probably has one of the worst hard tags in the game, or one of the not as good ones, because it has quite a bit of recovery. And but there are some good things about it, like because it always comes out where the the thing is, right? Say if they're like here, if they're not paying attention to where the grave is, you can just do a hard tag, and then you can combo off it. Okay, believe me, you can. This actually sometimes works against like. Peacock, like if I'm like as big fan, right? And I'm full screen and like fucking sad as hell because, you know, I can't get in. If I see that Peacock is like standing right on top of the grave, you can just go like, surprise motherfucker, you know, and hit her and get a combo. That's like, it, obviously you need to like pay attention to where the grave is. And if they pay attention to where the grave is, they might be ready for it. But sometimes, if it's like behind them, like this, then it will cross up. So that's kind of good. And then you can cut them off it. Okay, so that's about all I have to say about her throws and her heart attack. Okay, this section is going to be all about Squeaky's special moves, but first I want to quickly explain her stances and stance charges. She has two versions of all her moves on the ground. She has the uncharged version, and she has the charge version. And generally speaking, the charge version is going to be the better version for various reasons, but I'll explain all the differences when I start talking about her actual moves. So if you just do the move normally, you get the uncharged version. If you press and hold the button down, she goes into this stance, and this is when she starts charging up. Now, it takes 60 frames, that's exactly one second to build a charge. So it doesn't really take long at all. When you're in this stance, there are three things you can do. You can press left and right to hop back and forward. This is actually faster than her walk, by the way. You can release whichever button you're holding to do the move, and if you have the full charge, you'll do the charge version. Or, you can press any other button to cancel. And this cancel, it will store your charge, so that the next time you do the move, you'll instantly do the charge version. And then your charge will be gone, and you gotta start all over again. 
Now, the other thing you need to know about this cancel, first of all, is that you can just partially charge it. And then if you partially charge it, the next time you start charging it up, it will be a bit closer. And you'll be able to get the charge faster. But, if you do a partial charge and then waste your charge, you'll have to start again from scratch. Uh, the other good thing about this, this cancel is that it has no recovery. So, at any point when you're charging, if you're in danger, you can just press any button and you can instantly block and be safe. So that's pretty good. And the fact that it has no recovery, this is also what kind of makes her stance cancels work. So, like, instead of, like, even holding it and then cancelling it, you just, like, cancel it immediately. And then it actually, like, shaves off the recovery of some of her moves. But I'll kind of talk about that a bit later. Okay, so she has two stances on the ground. She has Dragon's Breath, which is used by all of her punch charge moves. So, people just call this punch charge, usually. And she has Serpent's Tail, which is used by all of her kick moves. So, people call this kick charge. Now, when you have a punch charge, you'll be able to instantly do the charge version of all of her punch moves. And likewise, when you have a kick charge, you can instantly do the charge version of all of her kick moves. And be aware that these two are separate from each other. So, like, obviously, if you have a kick charge, you can't do the charge version of punch moves. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go through all of her moves, both the uncharged versions and the charged versions. So, starting with Livermortis. The uncharged version causes a sliding knockdown. This is one of her two moves that does a sliding knockdown, the other one being Charged Arpeggio. Actually, another thing I should mention is that technically when it's charged, it's called the Seria version, which is what it says in the command list. Although, I don't really call it that, I just call it the charged version. Um, anyway. So she has Dragon Bite, uh, not Dragon Bite, Little Mortis, Sliding Knockdown. Now what you need to know about this move is that under normal circumstances you can't really combo into it, it's a bit too slow. The only way to combo into it is after a Silver Chord, you can do it like that. So what you can do is that, say, if you don't have Charge, and maybe you get a hit, instead of like doing a full combo or doing a reset or whatever, if you want, hang on if I can do this right, Freaking hell, okay, hang on. You do this, get the knockdown, and then you can just get the corner carry, get the guaranteed knockdown. And the other good thing is that after you get a knockdown, it gives you time to build up a charge. Okay, so that's the uncharged version. It's a sliding knockdown, it's kind of okay. I don't really use it that often. I kind of prefer to just go for like a reset or just the full combo. But if you want to, you can get a sliding knockdown. So that's kind of good. Uh, the charged version, it knocks them away, and in the corner, it causes a wall bounce. Uh, what this move is good for is you'll notice it does a lot of damage. And the main thing you really want to do this for is like in corner combos. You can do a lot of damage with it. That's kind of like the best way to do damage in the corner, using this move if you have charge. Okay, so that's Living Mortis. So the next move is her Sing. Now the thing is kind of tricky, it's kind of gimmicky. What it does is whenever you do it, it moves the camera so it will always put Squiggly in the center. It's called center stage. That's what it's, it's actually called center stage. I, I just call it Sing. I think everyone calls it Sing because it's just easier. Okay, so, and what happens is that you move the, you move the camera so that Squiggly's in the corner and it will also pull the opponent towards you if they're too far away so that they stay in the screen, right? So this move, it has some applications. I wouldn't really do the uncharged version very much because when you do it, you have a large amount of vulnerability. It has like 60 frames total. It's completely vulnerable. So it's very unsafe. Unless sometimes you can get away with it if you like cancel it immediately. Although in most situations I wouldn't do this. It's much better to do like the charged version like that, which I'll talk about later. Or, you can call it with an assist. That's pretty much the main time where I would use Uncharged Sing, is if I'm using it with an assist. And the assist that's good to use it with is Beat Extend. If you have Beat Extend, you can do this, it's kinda good. Because Beat Extend is invincible and has a massive hitbox. But, I'll talk about this later. There's like, possibly some other assists which are okay to call with it. Probably worse, most of them won't be as good as Beat Extend. There are some assists that you just, it's just like, no point doing this, you would not do this. Only if like, if it's something that maybe is invincible and you can combo off, that's kind of a good thing to do. Um, right, so we've, that's the uncharged version. Now the charged version of Sing, this is really interesting. So what it does is you do it and it sort of locks the screen in place temporarily. 
So, I don't know how long that was for, it's like a few seconds, you'll lock the screen in place. And it creates a temporary corner, so you might have seen it before, one of the ways that you can combo off throw with Squiggly is using the charge version of this move, because it creates a temporary corner like that, so you can get the wall bounce. So what this move is good for, uh, you can do, using the corner, you can do mid-screen double snaps. So what I'll do is I will set the dummy to call an assist, which is just going to be, you know, up do. There we go. And you get a mid-screen double snap. So to do this you need charge and you probably also need an assist. I think in some situations if you don't have charge you can do it, or if you don't have an assist, you can do it using another bar. What I'll demonstrate is that I'll send her back out. So wait till she does her thing. Say so I do this. There we go. Okay. So that's something you can do, is you can do a um just get them into the air, do a SBO. Then quickly build up the charge, release it, and then do the snap. It's actually kind of hard. It's a lot easier if you have an assist. And obviously it costs an extra bar as well. Um, okay. So that's kind of like one of the applications because of the fact that it creates a corner. The other interesting thing about this move is that when it like the screen turns blue like this, it's kind of like it has freeze frames like a super flash, right? So, this has some interesting applications. And what I'll do is say... Um, I'll make the dummy just like... Do... I'll, I'll just like make the dummy do like this. You know, I don't know why Philly is doing these moves at full screen, but whatever, it's just for the sake of example. Say, say someone's like doing a move at full screen. What you can do... You can do Sing, cancel it into Super, and you can punish anything from full screen. This is like one of Squiggly's best tools. The fact that you can punish anything from full screen using her sing. This is kind of like one of the best ways to get hits. And I can't stress enough how important this is, so I'm just going to say it over and over again for like five times. Uh, say I've got double, right? Uh, say she's like jumping in with her crazy jump hard punch, which is like one of the scariest jumpings you can do. What you can do is you can sort of use this move as like an anti-air as well. Is if you hold the charge, then like as soon as they jump in on you, you have like all the time in the world to react and do the SBO and get a full combo off it. What you can do instead is... Hang on. Okay, sorry. Oh my god. You don't need to do a... Ah, oh, that didn't work. Okay. So it depends on how like close they are to you. You can either... You can either do an SBO, or if they're too close and the SBO won't hit, you can do a Daisy Pusher instead, and they'll fall into it. Um, okay. So, and the thing that makes this move interesting, or well, the thing that's like important to know, is that because it has these freeze frames, is that you can't do a reversal out of it. So, like, in normal circumstances, if I just do a raw sing, and like try to hit catch something, Double can just do a car, and she can just get out of it. But if I do, if I do a sing first and then do the SVO, there's nothing she can do about it. She like can't reverse out of that, so it is a true punish. Um, if they are dashing, it will hit them. If they are doing any move, it will hit them. However, if they are in neutral, which means if they are just walking or jumping, then they'll be out of block. And this is like something that's a little bit different from most other moves, like say if I've got like Big Ben, right? If I do like uh, an SSJ right in their face, if they weren't blocking already before the flash, they won't be out of block. But with SBO, with Squiggly, they'll always be out of block because actually you used to be able to not be able to block it, it was changed because it was a bit too overpowered. So, but if they're dashing or doing anything, this will hit them. And there's nothing they can do about it. So that's what you can do if you cancel it into SBO. What about if you cancel them to Daisy? 
If you cancel into Daisy, now Daisy under normal circumstances, Daisy is kind of a command grab, but it's kind of a crappy one because if I set the dummy to jump, right? So I set the dummy to just jump. I do a Daisy pusher. It can be jumped post flash. So it's not that good. But if you do a sing first, it cannot be jumped post flash. And this is like, this is Squiggly's other really good way to get hits, I think, using this move. Is that whenever you're like at close range, whenever on the ground, you just do boom, boom, put them in the ground. And it actually has pretty good range. Like, this will work a lot of the time. And you can get a full combo for it. It's pretty good. And so, like, these two moves, sing into SBO. Or sing it to Daisy, I cannot stress enough how good these are. You can get a full combo off both of them. You can either punish from full screen or do an unblockable command grab, which cannot be jumped out. So that's about all I have to say about Sing. Just remember, it's really good. Okay, next move, Dragon Bite. Now the uncharged version of Dragon Bite, it's not really that good. It's pretty unremarkable. I guess the one thing that it's useful for is that like if you want to do a combo in the corner. Yeah. Or we're doing like, some kind of combo ender, you can just do that and then cancel into super and do a DHC or something. Like, I want to do this. Ah, doesn't matter. That's one of the good things Dragon Bites for. The Uncharted version is like not really that good. It's unsafe on block. Uh, if I make them block it. Hang on. It's minus 11, so it's pretty unsafe. And. It's only plus one on hit, so you can't combo with it unless you cancel it. So what I can do is, like, if I do this, then I can cancel it. But, you know, in most situations you're not really going to want to do that. Uh, the charged version. The charged version is a bit better, because you actually can combo off of it. It's, it's fairly plus. I think it's like plus ten or something. Let's see. It's plus eleven. So you actually can combo off this like that. And you'll notice it actually does a lot of damage. Like the entire thing does over 2000 damage. But it does a lot of hits, so you don't really actually want to do this because it will scale the combo. Maybe you're like only at the end of a combo if you want to get a lot of damage. That's kind of the situation to do in. Now, the reason why I would use charge dragon bite is say we've got say they're like calling an assist, right? Hang on. Uh, let's make it like that. So you like block and assist. You get both characters. You can use Dragon Bite to sort of get yourself closer and be able to combo off them. Because like under most circumstances, you, you could do a Silver Cord, right? But Silver Cord will never hit both characters. So if you have Charge, you can do a Dragon Bite instead. And that will be able to hit both characters. But, obviously, as I just demonstrated before, what you really are better off doing is getting a mid-screen double snap. So I say, um, wait for Philly to come out. Damn it. Okay, I'm just gonna block it. Wait for Philly to come out again. Like this. This is a lot better. Because this is like a guaranteed kill if I don't mess it up. So that's Dragon Bite. Those are like, that's like the only reason I'd use it, just to get, you know, happy birthday combos. Um, or as a combo ender, because it does okay damage. Okay, moving on. Dragon Punch. Now what this move is for, let me explain, there's, you, unlike all of her other moves, you can actually press this one in three different buttons, because, like, it's a different motion, so all the buttons are available. So the light version and the medium versions are exactly the same, there's absolutely no difference. The H version is a bit different, and I'll explain it a bit later. First, the uncharged version, what it's good for is, you might notice, it has a little bit of invincibility if you, like, look in the top left, uh, top right. You see it has a little bit of invincibility, but the entire startup of the stance is vulnerable, so it's not actually that good if you have just had, just have the in-charge version. Uh, what it is good for is uh, it hits them into the air, if any situation where you want to like hit them into the air for a combo. Like, if you want to combo into her level 3, this is one of the better ways to do it. Or, if you want to combo into... Like, if you combo into... Ah, what is it? If you want to like do an SBO, and then you can get a charge. This is like one of the ways you can build a charge mid combo. 
is you have to cancel into SBO after you get them into the air. So that's like the uncharged version. The uncharged version is pretty unremarkable, it's not that good. The charged version is a little bit better. It does more damage. Uh, you can actually combo off it. There's two ways you can combo off it. You either cancel it immediately, like this, or you can... Uh, if you don't cancel it immediately, you can still do a sing and do an SBO, and you can OTG them like that. Or maybe with some assists you might be able to like do some... Actually, I wonder if this will work. Let me just test this. That won't work. And that actually works on Big Band, it doesn't work on Philia. But if you like... With Big Band, I won't demonstrate it, but if you do like a charge... If you do it like a charge Dragon Punch, then do a Sing plus Beat Extend, the Beat Extend will hit them. Against Big Band. I don't think it works on any other character. So basically the two ways you want to combo off it, like I said, you either cancel it immediately, or you... You gotta do a Sing into an immediate SBO. Like that. Uh, okay, so that's like... The reason why the charge version is useful is... If you do the heavy version with charge, it is completely invincible, so it's actually a true reversal. Now the way the heavy version works is that you cannot charge it, or you cannot hold it. Like, if you hold the button, it will do nothing. You'll just let it rip. But, with the charge version, if you do the light and medium versions, it still has the vulnerable startup, like you can see. But if you have charge and you do the heavy version, it actually is completely invulnerable. So if you want to do an invincible reversal and you have charge, you want to do the heavy version. And it's actually like... It's actually... It's like one of Squiggly's one of two reversals, basically. It's pretty good. So it's a pretty good reversal. What it is not really as good for is an anti-air, unfortunately. Um, and you might think, oh hey, Squiggly has a literal Shoryuken, it must be a really good anti -air. And like, it's kind of okay as an anti -air. it's just like, it has some problems. So I'll get, I'll get the double, get the dummy to jump in on me, right? So say I have charge. Like, you can use this. The weakness of it is that it has pretty slow startup. Like, if you do the charge version and do the H version, it's 14 frames. As opposed to if I have Big Band, right? If I do a beat extend, it's 8 frames. So it's like a kind of slow. It's like one of the weaknesses for it. You can still use it as a uh, 90 air, though. I guess, if anything, what I would use it for is if I already have the charge. It's a lot easier because you, all you have to do is let go of the button. If you're like holding the, S, the DP, then you just. Ah, I, I did a Mortis that time, that's fine. That also works. That also has. Actually, that's something I didn't mention. Lila Mortis actually has a little bit of strike invisibility. As you can see, if you like look at the, um, the little display in the top corner, all the squares where it's blue, it's strike invisible. And what it means is that she is invincible to getting hit, but she can still be thrown. But I didn't really mention this because it's actually not really that important. There's probably no situations where I'd actually use this move for its invincibility. And obviously, unlike Dragon Punch, you cannot use it as a true vessel. The, the stance will always be vulnerable. Anyway, back to Dragon Punch. Is that so? You can like use it as like as a DP. Obviously, the weakness is that it's a bit slow. Um, but you can use it. It's like okay. It's one of, it's probably like her best anti -air. except for, like I mentioned before, what I actually prefer to do most of the time is do this. And the reason why I think this is better to do the sing, there's two reasons. Actually, no, there's just one reason. Uh, yeah, it's just one reason, pretty much. It's just a bit safer. Because, like, if they're, like, jumping forward and just blocking, then if you do a dragon punch, obviously, you're gonna get punished. But if you are doing a sing, and they just do like an empty jump towards you, I'll just make like that. Like ah, hang on. so I'll just like this. Is that they can punish you while they're coming down if you if they didn't press anything. But if you just like do an SBO. You'll waste a bar, but you'll be safe. Whereas with this move, you'll never be safe. If they do an empty jump, you're always going to get hit. And you might think, oh, okay, but that if you do an SBO, it requires uh, meter, right? But remember, you can't actually convert off Dragon Punch without meter. 
Unless maybe if you have an assist that can convert off it, then that's probably like one of the situations where it might be better to actually just do the Jungle Punch instead of the Sync as an anti-air. But as it is, since you need to spend meter anyway, I just find doing the Sync a little bit better. Okay, so I think that's all I have to say about Dragon Punch. Alright, let's go on to her kick moves. Arpeggio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch characters real quick. Because Arpeggio, it's not really, doesn't really have that many uses. But what it is useful for... Actually, I hope I did the right thing just then. Okay, we're good. Okay, first, what it does is... Like, it sticks this hitbox out, right? That kind of stays out in front of her and lingers for a long time. Uh, what this is kind of good for is you can use it as an anti-approach sometimes, like if they're trying to like air dash towards you or something, you can, since this is a lingering hitbox, it might hit them. Uh, normally though, I probably wouldn't do that. What it's more kind of good for is, um, oh by the way, if you hit with it, you have to cancel into super to get a combo off it. You can't combo off it otherwise. Um, what this move is good for is block strings. So I'll make the dummy block. Uh, say... That's not right, I'm doing the wrong thing. So say block always. If you end, uh, like, if you're just like doing a block string, you can do a serpentine, uh, sorry, not serpentine, arpeggio. He says serpentine, that's what confuses me. You can do an arpeggio, it's plus one, so it's not really that good, but I find this move actually catches people a surprising amount of time. It's that they'll like, I'll like do this, and then they'll be, I'll, they'll try to like jump out or press a button or something. But I actually do this and it just catches them. I don't know, I don't know why that works, but it does. It's just like, just ending box strings with this, sometimes it will hit people. Um, the other really good reason to use this is that if someone is using Beat Extend, so I'll record the dummy to call Beat Extend. If you're like doing this, you know, Big Band will come out and you kind of have to like stop your offense because you've got to be careful of Big Band, right? Or if you're like, say, doing like this, that actually hits Big Band, so I won't talk about that. Uh, but say like you're scared of Big Band, Big Band's about to come out, he's about to scoop you with his big freaking big extend and your opponent's about to get a full combo on you. What you can do is if you do an arpeggio, this will always beat Big Band. It has enough like rapid hits that Big Band's beat extend has five frames of vulnerability. It has enough rapid hits that like no matter what, it will always hit Big Band. So like, this is probably the best use that I've found for this move. This move is like the anti-beat extend. I'm doing it wrong, I'm doing it too late. Like that. So that's really what's good about Arpeggio. It's kind of like, it is the anti-beat extend. It only really works against beat extend though. Or against armored moves as well. Do it, absolutely do it against armored moves. Uh, I would not do it against Pillar or Updo because they have like only two frames of vulnerability so it's really not going to work quite as well. So yeah, this move pretty much will just stuff your opponent's reversal assists. And then, if they both get hit, you can combo it into an SPO and do a full combo, get a happy birthday. Okay, that's Arpeggio. Uh, oh yeah, that's just the uncharged version, I haven't even talked about the charged version yet. The charged version is kind of the same, except it has that little one extra hit. It actually is like slightly not as positive on block, it's only zero instead of plus one, but that's like fine, who cares. Uh, what this move is good for is... I'll set them to not block anymore. Is that this move causes a sliding knockdown. I actually mentioned this before, is that this is one of the other two moves that causes a sliding knockdown. So... And this move actually can be comboed into, like, without Silver Cord. But only if you have the charge. So what th something, one thing you can do is, say, if you, like... So you already have a punch charge, and you're like doing combo. You can build your kick charge. Oh, hang on, let me demonstrate this correctly. You can build your kick charge during the combo. And then, okay, just pretend that comboed. And then I would end it with an arpeggio. And that's something like. And then, like, you can keep your punch charge. You don't need to waste your punch charge to get the sliding knockdown. So that's kind of the good thing about Arpeggio. Uh, okay, Silver Cord. 
Now Silver Cord reaches really far. She says, "Go over here, you know, just like Scorpion. It's kind of cool. You know, we got our shout outs, our meme ref, not meme, but like, you know, our hip references and Skullgirls. That's all fun and good. Uh, so yeah, so this move, it brings them towards you and it causes a stagger. So this is like her only way of comboing into Daisy, if you want to combo into Daisy, because it causes a stagger. Um, it's also her only way of comboing into level 5, which I won't show you right now. Uh, so what this move is good for is obviously in combos, if you like need to hit confirm from a long distance away, the silver cord is what's going to work. And I'll bring them towards you, and you combo. Although you need to be aware that since this move, this is a hit grab which means it will scale the combo to 50% afterwards, so you kind of don't want to use it if you don't have to. If you don't have to, then you want to do something else because it will be more damage. Um, so yeah, since this move is a hit grab, which I just mentioned, is you can actually use it to break armor in some situations. So say I like, get Big Band out again. And say, uh, say he's just gonna, I'm just like going to make him like brass, right? Okay, assuming it doesn't trade, if you've got like a big band who's like really happy with brasses, sometimes you can do this move and it will hit him. And it will hit him out of the armor. And you might be able to do it on reaction if you like hold the charge. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm doing it wrong anyway. Doesn't matter. So yeah, this move is a hit grab. It breaks armor. I wouldn't really recommend using it to break armor in that many situations, but it's something that you can do sometimes. And what you can do sometimes, if you want to just like throw this out in neutral, you kind of can, and it will work sometimes. It's like kind of a gimmick. You just like throw it out randomly. Like sometimes what I'll do is like I will just like do it like a block string, and then I'll just like wait a little bit, and then I'll do like a delayed silver cord. And that and like if they do anything except block, like if they try to you know jump forward press a button, backdash, anything, this will hit them. And that's like something you can do, but obviously you need to know is that it is extremely unsafe. It is like, it has a lot of recovery, and it cannot be cancelled at all. As I suppose like every other move you can just cancel into super if you mess it up. Silver Cord cannot be cancelled. So if you want to do this as like a gimmick, you know, neutral move, sometimes it will work, but it's very unsafe it does, if it doesn't. Like sometimes, because like it, 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 you can catch people off guard with this, because uh, it, you know, it stays out. The hitbox stays out for a long time. The hitbox is actually pretty large, and like sometimes if they're just like jumping in on you, or doing something, or just like trying to approach and not blocking, you can just throw this out. And sometimes it will work, but obviously, like I said, it's very unsafe. Uh, the charge version, the charge version is basically just the same as the normal version, but it's a bit faster. It travels across the screen faster. It goes further and it has less recovery, so it's kind of just like better in every way. But it's not like, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but honestly. Like, there's not very many situations where the charge version is going to work, except when the charge, uh, uncharged version wouldn't work. Except for like, if you want to combo off a grab, like the charge version will work, while the uncharged version will not work. But like, otherwise, they're kind of similar, like, you know, most, the 99% of the application is going to be the same for uncharged or charged. Okay, and lastly is Tremolo. Now the uncharged version of Tremolo, not really that good. It doesn't really do anything interesting. If this hit low, then it would be good, but it doesn't hit low, so that sucks. Now the charged version is that it will kind of track them anywhere on the screen. It acts kind of like a projectile. This is like Squeaker's one projectile. And the way you can combo off this, if you get it to hit, is you do an immediate sing into a SBO. You can do it with an uncharged sing, theoretically, but it's like really hard. I, I can't do it. It's a lot easier with a charged sing. So yeah, you can do this sometimes. This actually does hit low, so that's good. Like sometimes if you have a kick charge, maybe if you just want to like gimmick them with a projectile that they're not going to expect that hits low. And then you can combo off it for like full damage, you can do that. But like most of the time I wouldn't really do that. Because this actually, it does have a lot of recovery as well. So if they're like jumping in on you, or if they're like not going to get hit by it, then no, it's, it sucks. But you can cancel it, so, so that's not so bad. Like if they're trying to like, if they like jump over it, you can just cancel it and you're pretty safe. 
Okay, so that's all of her um, ground moves, I think. Uh, now, her, she has one more special move, which is her dive kicks. This is only in the air that you can do this. So, the, she has three dive kicks, and they're all a bit different, so I'll explain the differences. First of all, the light version and the medium version are kind of similar to each other. The light version starts up a bit faster, but I think it travels slower. Whereas the medium version starts up a bit slower, but travels a bit faster. Or, that's like, that's just me looking at it, I think that's what it is, but I'm not sure, like, what the actual difference is. Um, on block, oh, the, actually, no, the other thing is that they have different trajectories. The, the light one does straight more downward, whereas the medium one goes a bit more horizontally. Uh, okay, on block, let's make the block, let's make the dummy block. Now, on block, it depends where you hit, like, how positive it is. On, uh, actually, this is bad to demonstrate with, because both these characters are very tall. But if, like, if, um, double is crouching, say, let's make double crouch, then it will be, like, very positive, right? Because it will hit them low. Uh, but, like, most of the time it's going to be safe. It's, like, very rarely it's going to be actually unsafe, or... Like, only if you hit them, like, very high will it be negative, but most of the time it will be pretty plus on block, it's pretty okay. Like, here it's plus five, so that's not bad. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'm pretty sure the light version and the medium version have the exact same block stun. So, if you're doing it with the intention of them blocking, you can do either version, it makes no difference. Now, let's set them to not block. Uh, after first hit. Now... Actually, I'll make her stand up again as well. Hang on. On hit, the light version has a lot less advantage. The medium version has a lot more advantage. So if you want to combo off it, you have to do the medium version. There's like no way you can combo off the light version. It's impossible. Because that's only... Uh, actually, some like extreme fringe situations, if you hit them like extremely low, you might have just enough advantage to like do a one frame link into a freaking jab that I would not do that. If you want to combo with it, you want to do the medium version. And this is kind of like why I think the medium version is generally the one you're going to be using like 99% of the time to approach with. Because you can actually combo with it, whereas the light version, most of the time you cannot. Uh, the one good thing that the light version is good for, because it has less hits done, is you can use it for like quicker resets. Not like that, hang on. And you can like go do a light dive kick and then do an immediate low and it's like really fast. It's a really fast reset. Whereas like the... The medium version has a lot more hits done. That's like plus 15. So obviously if you try to do a move it will combo. Oh I guess if you want to do like an immediate overhead that might be better but that still has a large gap. That's not really that safe. So yeah. The, the medium version is the one you're going to want to approach with because you can combo off it. And this is like one of Squiggly's pretty okay approach moves. You can just like go, yo, dive kick. It's like not, obviously it's like not as good as like Marvel 3 dive kicks, but it's okay. Uh, okay, so those are the light medium versions. Now let's talk about the H version. The H version is very different from the other two versions. Um, okay, so the H version is, you'll notice that like, when she does it, if you listen to it, she says, Grave Digger! So that's why I call this move Grave Digger. It's not actually called Grave Digger, it's just called... Like, actually, all three of these moves are called Fallen Woman. But no one actually calls it that, they just call it Dive Kick. But the H version... It's Grave Digger! So that's, that's why I call it Grave Digger. Okay. Um, so this move, you'll notice that it sort of sends you the opposite direction. Like, first she digs in, and then she like flips you above her head. And this has some different applications. First of all, in any combo, if you want to do a side switch, this is one of the best ways to do a side switch with Squiggly. Um, so like, say, actually, say I'm in the corner, and I want to do like a big man level 3, what I can do is like this. And that's like way better, obviously, because if you don't know anything about Big Band, his level 3 does more damage mid-screen when they're not in the corner. So if you want to do a side switch, that's one thing to do with it. Or like, say, if you're like in the corner and you get a hit... Ah, hang on, I gotta get them in the corner again. And you just want to like 
send them the other direction, you can do that. You can combo out after a silver cord. Or you can, like, you know, do an S string and then do it. Whichever you want. Uh, so that's one good thing the move is for, is you can use it to switch sides. You can use it as, like, an air hit confirm if you get, like, a janky air hit. So I make them, like... Uh, or well, actually, I don't even do that. Like, suppose I just do like, like I mentioned before when I was talking about in normals. If you get like a weird hit in the air, any weird hit that you can't just combo off normally, you can do a grave digger and always combo. So that's kind of good. The other thing to know is that this version actually hits high. So what I'll do is I'll set the dummy to block low. I'll go crouch, lock type, low. Normal. Oh no, I'm making them actually block, sorry. So, I didn't mention this before, but both her normal dive kicks, like light and medium, they do not hit low. I mean, they do not hit high. You can block them however you want. You can block them crouching. Her H version does hit high. But, what you need to know about this is that it's actually very unsafe on block. It's like minus 10 or something. Now, let me just actually find out. Let's set the dummy to back to normal. Block type. Fast, fast hit. Don't wall. Oh yeah, I need to make that actually. Oh, what I'll do is oh, oh frick, hang on. I'll just do this. It's minus seventeen. That's very minus. It's actually more minus than I thought. It's like, but yeah, it's very minus. You don't want to do this on block. So this is like you can use this as like an extremely risky instant head, like overhead. But if they block it, it's very very unsafe. Uh, you can use this move if, like, you're comboing, say... Actually, I'll bring in Pink Fan. So you're, like, comboing, and you're, like, not watching your undizzy meter, right? Actually, I'll turn the undizzy meter up a bit. So most of the time, if you want to do, like, a max damage combo with Squiggly, is that you want to, like, get the re-stand into, like, a ground string. But say you, like, are not watching your meter, and you're doing an air combo, you've already hit max undizzy. What you can do is you can just, like... Either obviously do a reset or a burst bait or whatever you want, or you can like do Grave Digger and then you know do a super off this, and that's like an o another okay way to end the combo with okay damage if you weren't paying attention to the Undizzy. Oh, yeah, another thing is that this is one of her good ways to combo into level 3 is that if you just want to do like this, or you can also combo into like SBO or any super. This is like one of the ways you can do it. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Grave Digger. I hope I didn't forget anything now. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so I've just gone through all the special moves. Now what I want to talk about is the value of stances, stance charges, and stance cancelling. So I've sort of introduced the concept of a charge, of how you can like charge it up, and then, you know, you, when you have the charge, you can do the charge versions of moves, right? So, let me just start off by saying this. If you play squiggly, you should be aiming to have a punch charge at all times. The only times you should not have a punch charge, if, if you've, at the start of the round, or if you've just used it. And if you've just used it, you need to get it back as soon as you can, because Having charges is extremely important to Squiggly's gameplay. You need to understand all the things that you can do with the charge that you can't do without a charge and why they're useful. So that's kind of what I just need to like drill in in this section. And basically I think you can think of it in two categories. One, if you have a charge, you can do all the charge versions of the moves which I just mentioned. And if you have a charge, you can do the superior stance cancelling. Like so. Now you might be wondering, I'm talking about punch charge here. Punch charge is really the important one to have. What about kick charge? Now kick charge is also okay. Like there are some things you can do with kick charge, like you can do the tremolo, you know. Uh, there are two reasons why kick charge uh, is not really... I wouldn't worry about it. One, it's just like not as good as punch charge. Like the moves you can do with kick charge are not as good as punch charge. And two, it's more likely that you will lose your kick charge all the time. Like any combo where you do a silver cord, that will make you lose your kick charge. So, like, if you don't have enough time to get both charges back, you want to prioritize punch charge all the time, mostly. Because kick charge, like, you're just going to lose it anyway. You're probably not even going to be able to use it. 
and it's just not as good. Okay, so first of all, <coughs> so I just need to reiterate what are all the things you can do with punch charge that you can't do. First of all, like I mentioned, if you have uh, punch charge, if you can do liver mortis to do high damage corner combos. Actually, the other thing you can do with liver mortis I forgot to mention is that you can also use it as a burst punish. So you do something like this, right? Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do this again. It's extremely good burst punish because it does a lot of damage. It gets like it's 2,100 damage total, and it has a lot of reach. So like where a lot of her other moves won't reach, this move will reach, and it's, so it's like a really easy burst punish. Uh, you can also, when you have punch charge, you have access to the sing. And, like I said before, with this move, it has two really good values. You can use it to punish things from full screen, or you can use it as a command grab. And this you can only do if you have punch charge. So this is one of the reasons why you need to make sure you have punch charge. Like, if you have punch charge, then people are scared of you from full screen. They're like, oh shit, I better not do a move, because he can punish it. If you don't have punch charge, you do not have that same threat. So that's, why, that's one of the reasons why it's very important to have punch charge. The other move is that... If you have punch charge, you have a true invincible reversal, which you cannot do without punch charge, except, okay, you can do, not that, sorry, I did the wrong move. You can do a daisy, which is an okay reversal, but that costs a bar, whereas if you have a charge, you can always do this, and this is a true invincible reversal. So, I just need to reiterate, as far as, like, moves go, if you have a punch charge, those are all the things that you do. You do extra damage in the corner, you can do full screen punishes, you can do command grabs, and you can do reversals. You can also do dragon bite, but you know, that's, who cares about that? That's not as good. So that's as far as like doing moves, right? Now the other thing is you gain access to the superior version of stance cancelling. Now, I haven't actually really talked much about what stance cancelling is. I sort of mentioned it a few times, now I'm going to go into detail explaining what it is. Okay, so you may remember that you, if you can, if you just press a button while you're doing charge, you cancel, right? So since normals can be cancelled into specials, you can do a normal, do the stance, and then cancel it. And what you can actually do is you don't even need to do the stance. If you just do a quarter circle forward and press two buttons, all she does is just as like this empty stance, and she just does the cancel as soon as she can. Uh, there's also actually also a shortcut you can do, is if you have a charge, you don't even need to you don't even need to do the motion. You can just press the two buttons. But I don't do this, and the reason is that like, you know, you can, one it doesn't work on block, which is bad, and two like you just need to get used to doing it with the motion anyway because you need when you don't have charge you still need to do stance cancels. So don't bother using the shortcut, just forget about it. You, or what you want to do is you want to do a quarter circle forward and press two buttons, and that's how you do a stance cancel. So what you can do with stance cancels is any move, you can make it a bit more safe, like say, you know, like I established before with the, um, the catch half punch. The normal version you can't, like, you have to do the full thing unless you stance cancel, it makes it a lot more safe. The other thing is you can use it for combos. Now, let's go uncharged version again. If I don't have stance charge, I can do a heavy punch, and if if I stance cancel it immediately, it's plus 11. So you can see, it's plus 11, which means I can link it into a jab. I can also link it to any of her lights, but it's easiest to do into a jab. So if you want to do, like, damage with a stance cancel, that's, like, one of the things you can do. Um, now, the difference is, if you have charge, you can still stance cancel, but it's a lot faster. So, without charge, if you do a stance cancel, the entire thing is 19 frames. With charge, it's only 12 frames. It's 7 frames faster, which is a lot. So, look at this. Before, it was plus 11. Now, when I do it, it's plus 18. So, when it's plus 18, you can actually convert into her mediums. And this does, you can do a lot of damage this way. Like that. That's kind of like one of Squiggly's best way of comboing when you have charge. 
So when you have charge, you get access to the superior stance cancelling. So all it is, is you do a move, you press a quarter circle forward and two buttons. If you have the... no, If you don't have charge, you get the slow stance cancel, which is still better than nothing. If you do have charge, you get the much better stance cancel. Oh, bear in mind, um, I'm doing this with punches right now. If I don't have kick charge, then if I try to press it with the kick buttons, I can still stance cancel. But if uh, if I need to have, like, you need to do, it's better to do it with the, with the one you have charge. So if, like, there's some situation where you do have kick charge, but you don't have punch charge, it's actually better to do stance cancel with kicks. But that's something that, like, you, most of the time you're probably not going to worry about because most of the time... There's very, going to be very, situa very few situations where you're going to have a kick charge but not a punch charge. Because you want to prioritize getting punch charges, right? So, to reiterate, you get extra damage, you are safer in neutral, and you also you get better mix-ups. So, like, say I don't have charge, right? Say I want to do, like, an overhead, right? Squeaky's overhead is very slow, it's 22 frames. Now... If I don't have charge, there's not really that many things I can do into it. Like, I can do like a delayed low, or like a delayed move, or I can do a light instantly into it. But if I want to do like a heavy into an overhead, there's no way it's ever going to happen. But since this is plus 18 when I do have charge, I can do that. So you get like a little bit of extra versatility when you do have charge for like every single thing you do when you stance cancel. So, let me just recap one more time. If you have charge, you can do more damage, both with stance cancelling and with liver mortis in the corner. You can punish from full screen. You can do command grabs. You can do an invincible reversal. And all of your moves effectively have less lag that the combo opportunities are better, they're safer in neutral, you can do better mix-ups, it's just better everything. So that's kind of stance cancelling in a nutshell. Like, all of those things you need to remember, because that's kind of why you need to have stances with Squiggly. Because, like, if you don't have stances, you're kind of just like old grandpa mode. Like, everything you do is slower and worse. And, like, all these things, like, oh shit, I need to do a reversal. Oh wait, I can't, I don't have charge. Oh, I could punish this from full screen. Oh no, I can't, I don't have charge. So, like, that's why you need to have charge at all times, because you can do all these extra things that you couldn't do before. And it's important to, like, actually, what I did when I was learning Squiggly is I, like, wrote down a list of all the things I just mentioned, and I, like, just memorized it. Okay, this is what I can do when I have charge, this is what I cannot do when I don't have charge. This is why it's important to have charge. Okay, so that is basically stance cancelling and the importance of having charge in a nutshell. Okay, now let's talk about Squiggly Supers. Now, I've kind of mentioned them all a little bit already, but now I'm going to go into a bit more detail. The first one I want to talk about is Squiggly Battle Opera, or SBO for short. Now, this move is, depending on which buttons you press, controls where it appears. If you press light and medium, it appears straight in front of Squiggly. If you press medium and heavy, it appears in front and above. And if you press light and heavy, it appears straight above it. Now it works, the, where, the position it spawns is always relative to Squiggly, but when you move, it stays on screen wherever it was. So if I like do it on the left side of the screen, and put it like above, it will always stay on the left side of the screen, no matter where I go. So that's basically how it works. Now, there are a few things this move is good for, some things it's okay for, and some things it's really not good for. So I'll talk about all those in turn. Now, first of all, what it's really good for, which I already mentioned, is it's a full screen punish. If you want to get, like, you can punish anything from full screen, get a full combo off it. It's really good. Using Sync. Uh, the other good thing it's for is for hit confirms. So for some situation, for some moves that you can't combo off normal, normally, like, you know, I mentioned before, like, the um, DP, you can use Sync to combo off it. Like, I, it didn't work that time, but you already know that it does work. Or, like, Arpeggio, you can combo into Sync. Or if you're full screen, if you want to do like a super jump, you can combo that into a normal combo. 
So there's like all situations where you can use Sing to combo and get a full combo where you couldn't really do anything else otherwise. And even though it costs a bar, it is better to get the hit than to not get the hit, so it's worth it. Uh, the last thing I'm going to demonstrate is you can use it as a punish sometimes. Uh, let's see how many times it takes me to get this, right? Okay, so I'll make the big man do a giant step and then crouch. Now... See, look, that counter hit him, right? Which means it was a punish. So, giant step, under normal circumstances, it's pretty safe. The L version is minus 10, which means, like, if I'm at, like, max range, I can't, like, all my moves, none of my moves will reach. Shit. But, if I do an SBO, if I do it a little bit faster, there, ah, oh, okay, I thought that would work. Okay, you saw me do it before, so it's actually kind of tight, but theoretically you can do it. There we go. So you can use it as a punish. I actually don't know exactly how fast it is a punish, because if you look at like the display in the top right, that looks like it's got like 15 frames of startup, but it just punished something that's minus 10, so it's clearly less than that. But I don't know how you're supposed to tell how fast it is, except to test it. And I know that I think it's like at least like it can punish Peacock's M Bang, which is minus nine, so it's like at least that good. Uh, so you can use it as punish in sub situations where you couldn't punish with anything else. But it is kind of hard if you do it too slow, you're gonna waste your bar. So you better practice it. Uh, okay, so those are the things that's good for. So it's good for full screen punishes. It's good for hit confirms. It's good for punishes in sub situations. Things it's okay for. You can kind of just use it as like a screen control tool because it will stay out for a long period of time and like now the opponent's got like this lingering hitbox that they've got to deal with and they've either got to like block it or maneuver around it somehow. Uh, I say this is okay because it's good if you use it which then leads to you getting a hit. But what can happen is if you just do it and then they just like chill out and wait for it to go away, then you just wasted a bar. So it's not really that good in that situation. Uh, another thing you can do is that, uh, which I won't demonstrate, is that uh, if you put like, if you put it out, it can stop some projectiles. Like some characters' projectiles, like it, the FCBO will just stuff them. So if you're having a really hard time with projectiles, you can do that sometimes. But I wouldn't recommend doing this because, like I said, like it costs a bar and you are not going to get a guaranteed hit off it, so it's like not as justifiable. But the situation where you can do this is, say, you're like at the end of the round and you have like five bars and it's just like it's a 1v1 and any hit from either person will, you know, finish the game. Then absolutely you want to go for it because that's going to like really help you. And, you know, they've got this extra thing they've got to deal with now. And if, if you have like a lot of meter to spare, then it's fine. You don't need to worry about wasting the meter. But if you, like, in most situations, Squiggly as a character, you want to save your meter, so I wouldn't do that. Another thing that it's okay for is if you need to make yourself safe in neutral. Like, say you accidentally did a freaking Dragon Bite. See, this is something that actually happens to me a lot, is I'm trying to do, like, an overhead. And sometimes I'll just, like, accidentally get a Dragon Bite like that. So if that happens to you, like if you accidentally get a dragon bite, you can cancel it and you can make yourself safe. It's like it kind of sucks because it does waste a bar, but it's better than getting punished. So you know, sometimes you can do if you do something safe, you can cancel it. Uh, another okay thing you can use it for is DHCs. You can kind of do it with some characters. It's like an okay option to DHC into because like I can do this right, and then like the SSJ will knock them up into the SBO and then I can like do stuff after it, so that's kind of good. Uh, so that's one good situation to use it for. Uh, now let's talk about the things that it's not good for. Now first of all, it is not good for damage. The damage sucks. Uh, so from unscaled it does like 1740, which is, you know, it's not that good. It actually does less damage than her Dragon Bite. Uh, I, if when it's at max scaling, each hit does 75 damage, so the entire thing, all 5 hits, does 375. Which is only slightly more damage than a crouch like kick. So, do not use it for damage, like, don't, like, do this. And then, like, end a combo with it. Unless you, like, need to for some reason, like, if you want to do something else after it, I don't know. Don't use it for damage. Actually, you can, like I just showed before, you can use it with DHCs, that's okay. 
you know, it's not like the best, but it's, you know, it's okay. Um, so don't use it for damage. The other thing you don't want to use it for is a reversal, because... Let's see if I can demonstrate with this big man, right? Say, I just make him do an SSJ. Say I just, like, do a wake-up SBO. He can SSJ straight through it. So, it sucks as a reversal, because, like, if you do a sing first, then he can't do anything. But if you don't do the sing first, if you just do it raw, it'll, he'll, like, they can always reverse that. And actually, like, a lot of the time it won't even work, because they'll be too far away. Although, actually, no, they'll be too close. Because if you're too close, it won't even hit. So this move is, like, a sucky reversal. Uh, actually, the one okay situation is if they're, like, jumping in on you and trying to, like, do a, like, a meaty aerial or something, you can do the, you can do the anti-air version, and that works sometimes, and, because mm, they, they won't be able to cancel it either, unless they have, like, an air super, or some air invincible move that they can cancel into, so that's, like, the only time I'd use it as a reversal, or if you're gonna DHC, I guess it's okay, if you, like, if you, like, put the thing out, go straight into big band. That is like kind of an okay two bar reversal, and you can also combo off it, which is what is kind of good. Uh, okay, so it's not good for damage and not good for reversal, but it's good for all those other things. That's basically everything I have to say about SBO. Another thing I forgot to mention about SBO is that it will go away if Squiggly gets hit, which makes it a little bit more difficult to use against Peacock, because this will happen. Since her Georges don't go away if, if she gets hit, then if she has a George on the screen, especially the plane, if it hits Squiggly, then the SBO will disappear and you won't be able to get your combo. But what you can do is if you have two bars, if you tag Squiggly out, the SBO will stay, and then if you're quick enough, you can actually get a combo afterwards. Or even better, if you have a character with like a, an armored or an invincible super, you can just go straight through the plane and not even get hit. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that if you have an SBO already out, you can't have another one. That's probably already obvious, but just in case you didn't know, I thought I'd just mention it. The next super I'm going to talk about is Daisy Pusher. Now Daisy Pusher, I've kind of already talked about this move as well. This move is a command grab, but it can be jump post flash unless you do it with a sing. If you do it with a sing, then it's actually a really good command grab. Uh, if you if you want to do damage with meter with squiggly, it's a lot better to do this move than to do an SPO. And what you actually want to do is like do like this, do like a daisy push a mid combo, and then continue the combo. But most of the time I wouldn't do this, like I don't think it's actually worth spending the bar to do damage. Probably just like in Skullgirls in general, unless it's going to kill, because you want, you want to do a reset instead, you want to like keep your meter. Uh, but that is something you can do. You can also do it if, uh, if you need to build charge during combos, this is like one of the ways you can do it. But it's like kind of hard, so I don't really do it for like... So what you can do is like you can build like a little bit of charge first. You do like a silver cord, then build like a little bit of charge. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, I did it too slow. But theoretically, you could like build a little bit of charge, then do the daisy, and then get the rest of the charge, then OTG. But it's like, it's very tight. It's not easy at all. Okay, I've kind of mentioned this a few times already. It's that the fact that Daisy Pusher is one of Squiggly's good reversals. This is kind of like the other main thing that you'll be using it for. Other than like, the first is going to be as a command grab with Charge Sing. The second is that you're going to just be mashing this on Wake Up or during combos as a reversal. Now, for example, I've got this Bella here doing like a basic grab reset, right? Now let's see what happens if I mash Daisy. Boom. Bodied. Maximum skill. Okay, so that's what you gotta do. This is like what this move is good for, other than the first thing, which is, you know, command grabs. This is like, you just mash it. And actually, here's a fun fact. I actually didn't even know this until recently. The best way to mash a reversal in this game is to do the motion once and then just mash the hell out of the button. So, this is how you beat, like, resets. It's to just, like, first you do need to kind of predict when the reset's coming, because you do need to just do the motion once. Unless you want to, like, spam the motion and the button, but that's, like, I find that a bit less effective. It just doesn't work as well. So, you want to, like, do the motion, mash the button. 
That's basically how you use Daisy as a reversal. However, the fact is that this move is a command grab, right? Which means it will not work against airborne opponents. And let me see if I can demonstrate this real quick. Uh, hang on. Alright, so now Bella's doing, like, an instant overhead instead, right? So, if I try to daisy out of this... The daisy just does nothing to her, because she's in the air, and it's a grab. You can't grab people in the air. Um, so, this is, like, something to be aware of against characters who have, like, jumping instant overheads, like Bella, and... Bella's jump heavy punch sort of stalls her in the air for a little bit, which is kind of what makes it fail against, or what it like beats Daisy. But what you can do is if you have another bar, if you notice that they do this, you can just like go into your other character and still get the reversal. So that's okay. Um, other than as a reversal, the other thing Daisy is good for is it's actually a surprisingly good anti air. And now you might be thinking, well, hang on, I just said that it doesn't work against airborne opponents, right? Well, actually, if you jump and do an aerial, when you land, you have a little bit of landing lag where you can't immediately, like, jump again. So, during those frames, you are completely vulnerable to the daisy. So, say I've got Double, who's going to jump in with a jump heavy punch, which I really hate this move. This move is fucking terrifying. But if I do a daisy, she falls into it, and she can't avoid it. So that's like really good. This is like, but the limitation of this is that you need to do it after they've already pressed the button. Because if they don't press the button, or you just like do it way too early, then they can just easily either use their double jump, or double jump, or like just jump again once they land. Or maybe the, by the time they land, the hitbox will already be gone for the daisy. And then they'll just be able to easily punish you. So you need to like wait until they press the button, and then do the daisy. That's the best way to use this as an anti air. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is that this will not work against characters with moves that sort of stall them in the air, just like Bella's Jump Heavy Punch, which I like just showed before. Like, if Bella is like flying in with, you know, this move, you don't want to anti-air that with Daisy, that will never work. Or, if they are a character with like an air move, or a super, that they can cancel into, like, I don't have him out, but suppose Big Ben, actually, what I'll do is, um... Ah, uh, what am I doing? Hang on. Here, I got this big man. Is that like, if I'm coming down with like a jump light kick and then I notice the opponent daisies, I can like either cancel it into symbol or cancel into timpani. And I can like sort of avoid the daisy that way. So that's something you need to be aware of if you're going to use it as an anti air against like big band. Because big band also has a pretty good like jump in normal. But if you want to like anti air him, he can avoid it because he can just cancel it. So yeah, that's something to be aware of. Uh, next, let's talk about level 3. Now, Squeakle's level 3, it's not really that good. Like, the kind of the gimmick with it is that she shoots it out and then it follows the opponent. And it will just continually follow them until it hits or they block it. And it does... how many hits does it do? Hang on, let's, let's actually do this. So it does 8 hits. And I think the way it works is that every time it like goes past the boundaries of the screen, it loses one hit. So eventually, if you can continually avoid it, it will go away. Uh, I wouldn't really throw this move out, just like, and make it chase them, unless they've got like no health left, then you can kind of do it. But really, probably more often you're going to want to just like combo into it and get the damage. And it's like, it does okay damage. It's not like great, but it's, it's, it's okay. Actually, with my team, is that if I have three bars, what's going to be better to do a lot of the time is to do this. Just do, like, Big Man's level 3. It does a lot more damage. So, yeah. Squeak's level 3. There's a few ways to combo into it. Like, if you just do it, like, raw, like, it'll work against Big Man because he's fat. But if I do it against, like, Philia, it just, like... It, like, kind of doesn't combo for me. So, you, what you want to do instead is, like, put them into the air and then do it. Either with a Dragon Punch, with a Launcher, or with a Grave Digger. Or if you're just, like, doing, like, an air string like this, that also works. Okay, I did it too slow, but it does work. Uh, that's a level 3. It's not really that useful. It's, you're probably not going to be using that often. Like, you're probably not even going to get 3 bars most of the time, because you're going to be using her other 2 supers a lot more often. 
Okay, the last move I want to talk about is Squig is level 5. Okay, so the way you have to do level 5, first of all, you need to have 5 bars. And it's like, how often is that going to happen? How often are you going to get 5 bars? Uh, but for, assume for a second that you have 5 bars for some reason. The second thing you need to do is you need to have a taunt. If I can freaking do a taunt, there we go. So you have to do a taunt, and then thirdly, you need to have either charge. You don't need both, you just need one of them. Then the input to do it is like a raging demon, except with the punches and kicks swapped. So you do two kicks, two light kicks, then a forward, a light punch, then a heavy kick. So you do it all together, this is what you get. Now this move is really cool, because it's like, hey, it's like Akuma's raging demon, that's sick! So it's a pretty cool move, unfortunately it's pretty useless, it's pretty crappy. Okay, first problem I mentioned is that it has all these requirements, and it's like, first of all, you're never going to get five bars in a real match, it's going to be very rare. Um, <laughs> second of all, hang on, what I'll do is, uh, that's fine, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Uh, second of all, it's kind of finicky to set up. Like, it's you, it, it's a grab, so either you need to be like right in their face and do the entire input, or you need to combo into it from Silver Cord. And those are the only two ways you can pretty much do it. As opposed to like, say, Big Man's level 5, where you can do it anytime, and it's like actually good, or Double's level 5, or you know, those characters have good level 5s that are useful if you have 5 bars. Squiggle's level 5 is really only useful if you want to swag, so it's not that good. But, hey, if you get the meter, you can do it, I guess. Okay, I'll actually demonstrate uh, the good ways to set up. So, first I'll yes, set the dummy health back to 100%. Um, where is it? I'm gonna make them block, right? <coughs> Always. If you do a dive kick, you can do like a dive kick and immediately do it. That's like one good way of doing it. That's probably the easiest way to set it up without comboing into it. Or if you do combo into it, like. Hang on. Oh my god, hang on, give me, give me one more try. Okay, wait, wait. wait. Oh, I don't have the. Ch I don't have the torn, that's why. I need to actually get this stuff. There we go. You can combo like that. So yeah, that's basically Squiggles Level 5. It looks really cool, it's really shit. It's like, yeah. <laughs>Okay, so now we've gone through all Squiggles moves, let's put them together into some combos. And I'm going to call this section Comboing with Squiggly, because my intention is not to just give you a list of combos that you can do, but sort of explain the fundamentals so you can build your own combos. And... Okay, the way I think of a Squiggly combo is there's basically four parts. There's the first part is the first ground sequence, which is where you're going to use stand cancels to get most of your damage. Then you get the charge, and then you do an air sequence, and then you can do the last ground sequence. Now, first let's talk about the first ground sequence. This is going to depend on whether or not you have charge and where you are on the screen. So say I don't have charge right now. What I do is this. Simple. So you do any ground string, any heart punch, then you do stance cancel, light punch, and then do another heart punch. Um, technically you could also do like a medium here. It kind of depends on the undizzy. You need to like sort of figure out whether or not you can do it and whatever full combo you're going to do because I find that like usually saving the undizzy works out to be better just to just like skip the skip the medium and go straight from light to heavy. Uh, so that's if you don't have charge because if you don't have charge all you can do is link into a light uh, so it's not really that good. If you do have charge and then you can link into mediums which is a lot better. So what I do when I do have charge is this. Like that, right? So first you do the medium kick, because it does more damage, so you want to do it first. Then you do the medium punch. Then once you've used both your mediums, then you got to do a light. And then either you can do like a light into silver cord, or you can do like a light into raw launch. You know, whichever you find. So yeah, something like this. Medium kick, medium punch, and then light. And then, you know, do the next part, whatever you want to do. Okay, and the last thing is, if you're in the corner, you might remember I said you can use Liver Mortis. Do something like this. 
And that does a lot of damage, because Living Waters does a lot of damage. This is like the best way to get damage in the corner if you have to charge. So basically, you just do any ground string, do a Leaven Mortis, an OTG, then uh, you do the Soul Cord. Actually, something I should mention, it is actually possible to link Hard Punch into itself when you have Stance Charge, but it's a two-frame link. I personally don't go for this. I just go for the mediums. I find that it's like, it's not even that much better to do, like, just mediums, it's easier, it, you know, it's, it's fine, just do the mediums. Okay, so that's the ground strings, right? Now the second part is to get the charge. Now this is technically optional because you need to use an assist to do it. Unless the other way to get charge in a combo is you can like spend meter to do it, but a lot of the time I wouldn't recommend doing this because, you know, Squiggly's got to save her meter. So what you really should do is just use an assist. Now you might be thinking, oh, what if I don't have an assist that lets me get charge? Well, I think you should consider picking a different assist, or picking a different team, because Squiggly is the kind of character that you need to build a team around. This is one of the things she needs. Like, you don't have to if you don't want to, like, I can't tell you what to do, but if you want my recommendation, like, if you're trying to think of, like, what assist to pick with Squiggly, this is one of the qualities you want to look for, one that will let you build charge and combos. So anyway, the way I do it is I do a Silver Cord, I call Big Band, I will start charging, then once Big Band releases, I cancel and then I go to a launcher. So this is what I do. Let me show you. Something like this, right? Uh, this part is also optional if you already have charge. What you can do is you can get your other charge, or you can just skip it. It's like, it's up to you. A lot of the time getting your other charge is not like that good. If you want to get like a slight knockdown with Silver, um, Arpeggio, then you can do it. It's up to you. So yeah, you get the charge, and you're gonna just need to, whoever you play, you're just gonna need to experiment with what ways you can do it. There's some assists, there's like lots of different assists you can do it with, some assists that you definitely can't do it with, you just need to figure it out. Okay, uh, next is the airstring. Now the airstring's pretty simple, it kind of just looks like this. Okay, uh, something I should point out is that this is actually doing air combos with Squiggly, is very finicky on double, because like all sorts of crappy stuff happens. She always falls out. She always like hits the ground first, or like she's too low, or something happens. Like, comboing double in the air is just a nightmare. So usually what I prefer to do is just like, just to keep it simple and try to like just do damage on the ground instead. Uh, against any other character though, what you want to do is, first you launch them, you do a medium kick, hard punch to juggle them, then you want to re-jump, and do a light, and then kind of repeat the medium kick hard punch. Uh, the first time you do it, you like let the medium kick rock for a few hits, and then do the hard punch. But then on subsequent loops, you just do one hit, and then do the hard punch. That's kind of how you do it, like this. Let it rock, do the hard punch, jump again, and then just press it, and just do one hit, then do the hard punch. And then on the last rep, so you do this, you do your, you do your first light, then you do your other light, and then you, you do a medium kick, and then you let it hit, and then you do a restand with hard kick. This is basically what it looks like. Something like that. Uh, it is optional how many loops you want to do, like you can just go straight for the restand from the first loop. Or you can just skip the loops altogether and just go like something like this. So what the air string is good for is that once you've done most of your damage, like once your combo is scaled a little bit, you can do like more damage, and you get a bit of corner carry, and it has some good reset points, which I'll talk about later. So that's kind of the air string in a nutshell. Um, and then lastly is the last ground string. So that's like if you are at the end of the combo, you want to do like a restand, and then you can do just like any last ground string just to get like max damage, just something like this. Uh, so this is kind of optional because th I would only do this if you are trying to kill the character. If you cannot kill the character then it's really not worth it, you might as well just go for a reset, right? Or if you want to like end with a sliding knockdown then you can also do this. If you want to, like if you have kick charge, then you just want to get like the sliding knockdown. 
Ah, I fucked it up. Hang on. You can do that, right? Otherwise, you can DHC, you try to kill the character, or if the full max damage is going to kill, then you can just kill with it. Now, the way you get the most damage at max scaling is you do two jabs, you do a medium punch, and you crouch heavy punch. That does the most damage. Like that. And then do a dragon bite. Although, you might not want to do a dragon bite if you don't want to waste your charge. So, if you don't want to waste your charge, you can do an arpeggio instead. Or maybe a tremolo. You know, it kind of depends. So, like I said, that part's optional. It's only if you are trying to kill the character. And you don't need to do this. You can kind of just do, like, anything. Like, you can just do that. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Okay, so now let's put it all together. So, if I don't have charge, which is what I don't have right now, let me do a full combo. Like that. If I do have charge, what I'll do is this. Like that, right? Or if I'm in the corner, what I do is this. Ah, I fucked it up. Okay, but you know what you know what I mean. Uh, something else I should also mention is that when you're doing the air string, if they're too high, like against lights, instead of doing a normal jump, sometimes you might need to do a super jump. So you kind of just need to gauge it, like where they're going to be if you need to do the extra height. Okay, so that's basically how you build a combo with Squiggly. You do the ground string, you use stance cancels to get the damage, you get the charge, then you do the air sequence, then you do the last ground sequence. And this is kind of like, it's not really set in stone, you can kind of mix it up, do whatever you want. You just gotta like, find whatever works for your team. You can probably do better things than this if you have like crazy assists that let you do specific setups or whatever. Uh, the last thing I should mention is, this is something that I've actually already demonstrated, but I just want to like, you know, go over it and actually talk about it, is how to do a double snap. Now, if you do a double snap with Squiggly, okay, let's try that again. Let's see if that will hit. Okay, what you want to do is just OTG and do stand hard kick, stance cancel. Repeat to infinity until they die. It's really simple. And the good thing about this is that it will work in the corner or mid screen. So if you do like a mid screen double snap using the sing, it will also work. You can just do the same thing like that. It's pretty simple. Okay, so that is how you combo with Squiggly. Okay, so now let's talk about some resets. And the first thing I'm going to go through is high lows. So Squiggly, she has some lows, she has an overhead, and she can also grab. So, like, that's always the mix-up, is like, whenever on the, on the ground, you can possibly go low, high, or grab. And they have to be, like, aware of all three. So, the like, the most absolute, most simple way to do a reset is to just, like, drop your combo, and then do, like, a delayed low, or an overhead. So you can do something like this. That will be an that will be an overhead reset. Like if you just do like the jab into the overhead, or you can do like a medium into a delayed overhead. Or if you have charge, you can do like a heavy strained overhead, which is that's actually kind of like it's a little bit trickier to do, but it's also possible. Or like obviously you can go to low. You can go like any hit into like a delayed low. So you can just do like. Sometimes, like, when you're trying to do stance cancel combos, you'll, like, do the low, and you'll just mess it up, and it'll just be an accidental reset. That's kind of cool. But the problem with doing this on the ground is, like, doing, like, basic high lows on the ground, is that this is very susceptible to being reversal out of it. So, if I make Philia do a Gregor, and set it to do it as a reversal, so, like, any combo I try to do, you're just gonna get hit. There's like nothing you can do. You shouldn't do this if you think they're gonna like reversal. Anyone who like mashes often, just like I don't even bother doing this. Do other resets instead, or do burst baits. Do uh, definitely do burst baits against people who mash. It's really good. Okay, so that's like the most basic, basic level way to do uh, resets, like high lows. The slightly 
more advanced way is to like try to hit them with a low or a high as they're about to land because that makes it a little bit harder to do the re um, to do the reversal. But it's still possible, it depends. Actually there's like this um this thing to do with like pre-block that will make it like impossible to do reversals if you time it perfectly. I don't really know much about that. So uh, I won't really <laughs> talk into detail, but that is a thing apparently. Um Okay, so, uh, one of the ways you can do reversals is like, if you're just juggling them, you just wait for them to land, and go for a low, and go for a high, or if you're really ballsy, you can just do a raw launch and go for a low or for a high. Now, th the situation where this is good, or like, m better, is if you've like conditioned them with lots of grabs and they think, oh, okay, I'm gonna tech, and then, like, then you just go for a low. That will work sometimes. But if you do this, this is extremely susceptible to just like they can just press a button and hit you as they're falling down and you'll get hit. So that's kind of a risky way to do high lows. Something you can do mid screen is you can do this. And that's like a really, really good low reset. Because this isn't like, this is a lot less easy. Obviously, you can't like press a button at that range. Um, and they can still reversal out of it, but you're a bit further away, so you're like a lot safer. And the good thing about this is that for some reason, people like don't expect to block low here, like, because obviously first of all, yeah, you've just come down from the air, and now I'm like really far away from them. They don't think I can hit them with a low, but you can, because Squirrely's got really good lows. So this is actually something I do a lot: is just do like this. Something you can also do is you can uh, if you dash, you can do an overhead, or you can do a command grab, like so. And the good thing about um, doing a command grab in this setup is that if they like are holding up back, then they won't be able to punish you. Or um, like probably not. If they like a neutral jumping for some reason, then they might be able to punish you. But that's not going to be likely. If they're going to be holding up back, which means you're going to be able to just like either they'll be on the ground and you can get the grab, or they'll be jumping away and you'll be safe. So that's like kind of a really good way to do a, like a, a high low as well to either do the raw low, or you can like dash and do the high, like that. Okay, uh, I think that's about it for high lows, oh except there's one more thing you can do, is sometimes you can just like, I'll bring a big man, sometimes you can just like jab people while they're in midair and sort of like stuff their descent and then like do another high low as they're coming down, like you can do like this. Like, a lot of the time people won't, they'll like mess with their timing and then they won't be sure what to do. Like, that kind of works a lot. So on Big Ban what you can do is, after a Grave Digger, you can do like, because he's so fat you can just hit him with a jab. This actually works a lot of the time, like, this is basically unblockable on Big Ban. He's a, mm, mm. Oh, you obviously gotta do it before they hit the ground. And also if you do it, if you do it too fast, the, the light kick will actually link, which you don't want. One other thing I should mention is that if you do a light dive kick in the corner, you can do like a really quick low. And this will kind of work if they're not blocking low because, you know, they won't like, they'll still think that they're like not on the ground, that you can't hit them with the low yet because, you know, usually you have like this, there's like a whole a delay before you land, right? But if you do the light dive kick, you go like low immediately and they sometimes they won't be ready for it. Or you can maybe theoretically do like a medium dive kick into a heavy, or you can do the light dive kick into a grab or whatever. So that's another good thing you can do with the dive kicks in the corner. Also, one of Squiggy's good strengths when it comes to doing high lows is that you don't have to just do one high or one low. You can actually do several in quick succession. Like, say you're doing like a basic low reset like this. Like just do a del delayed low and uh, stand heavy punch, right? Now this is good because this does a lot of damage, like going straight into stand heavy punch, that does pretty good damage. But what you can alternatively do is you can do a low into overhead. And this does less damage because the overhead does less damage, but it is a high, which means that if they block the low correctly, now they've suddenly got to block the high. So that's pretty good, that's like something that you can do to be extra tricky. Um, and you can go even further, like you can go, you can cancel the overhead and go into a crouch light kick. And the good thing about doing this is that all of this will combo if it hits. Like if they fail to block at any point, the rest will just work. 
not like you can do. Whoops. Like, all of that will combo. Um, so, that's something that you can do, like, to be extra tricky and have a high chance of opening people up once you get close to them. Uh, there are, like, three weaknesses to this. One is, like I mentioned, it is less reward than if you're, like, pretty confident that your low will work. You probably want to go straight into the, um, like the sand heavy bunch, because that does a lot more damage. And the, the damage difference is actually fairly significant. It will do like a thousand more damage, which is a lot. Um, now if you do like the overhead into a crash light kick, not only does this do less damage, it will also sort of like progress your IPS. So like uh, you'll be you won't be able to do as long as a combo because it will progress you like your stage for FPS. But that is absolutely something you can do, and this was like something that's good. Uh, the other weaknesses is that you, if they push block at any point, you're basically you're out of there. Your pressure is gone. Um, but there are ways to mitigate this. You know, like I mentioned before, you can either bait the push block and like make them backdash. Or you can sort of use the multi hits to stay close to them. And the last weakness is that, like all high low resets, if they're mashing reversal, you will just get hit. So that's something to be aware of. It's like this is a good thing to do, but you need to like be aware of the risks, especially being reversaled. So uh, yeah. Okay, let's talk about some cross ups. So the most basic cross up you can do is you can just launch, stance cancel, then dash under, and do. You know, any move. So you can just like do the low, the cross up low, or you can do like the level two, which is like to go in overhead, or you can like fake the cross up. But the reason why this is bad, there's two reasons, is that if they have a double jump, they can easily get out. If they have an air dash, they can also get out, and uh, they can just hit you as they're coming down with the move. So like this is not actually that good of a reset. What you can do to make it a little bit better is to instead of trying to press a button, you just call an assist instead. And like, if you do it really well, it'll be like really fast. I can't like do it that well, I need to practice it a bit. So that's like one really good basic cross-up setup. Uh, you can do cross-ups off air combos. So you can do like, you just like, do a raw launch, uh, do a, like an early aerial, and then you'll land on the other side, right? And like I said before, you can sort of mix this up with like the jump mini punch to switch back to the, pre uh, the original side. Uh, you can also do the same thing off like an air string. If you manually super jump, like manually super jump forward, you can go over them and get across up like that. So that's pretty good. And theoretically, you should be also do be able to do the jump mini punch here as well. Although it might be a bit harder. Uh, so those are some good cross up setups. And the other thing is uh, with sand mini punch, which I think I've shown already. You can do a cross up like that. You just need to like. After you're juggling them in the corner, it's like you need to make sure you hit them with the first hit and then cancel it. And then they'll go over your head. And then you can just do an easy cross up, or you can like go for the level two and go for like an overhead or whatever, or a grab. And um, the bad thing about this though, this is like you can only do it in the corner, and then once you do it, you'll be in the corner. So you better hit them, otherwise, you're going to be in the corner. So that's kind of a problem. Um, okay. And you can also set up the same thing off of assist sometimes, so like with me. Okay, I messed it up, give me a sec. Okay, so you can go to the same side. Or oh, let's see if I can do it right, there we go. You can get it to cross up. And kind of one of the good things about this is that like... You sort of like cross them up twice, like first you walk behind them. And then if I can do it right. And then you like make them back to the other side. So you kind of like go back to the same side that you were originally on. So it's not actually like useful, but it kind of makes it like a little bit more confusing because like you actually like cross them up twice pretty much. And um, like even if they know that you're going to do it, just the fact that you know you like you move behind them and then you move them behind you sort of makes it just like a little bit more confusing to block and they might like not know which way to block. Uh, yeah, and obviously sometimes this will like not cross up and you can do the same side So it's kind of like a lot of the time even I don't know which side this is gonna go. This is like a really good cross-up setup uh, Another thing you can do with beat extend is this 
you can just like do a normal jump, you know, aerial, and hit with a cross up like that. Uh, I think that's about all I have to say for cross ups. Oh yeah, one more thing. This is like just like a silly trick you can do. Is like you can just do a combo and just jump over them. It's best to do this with like a you know stencil sand heavy punch because that's plus 18. Then you can just like jump over them. You know, call an assist. It's like kind of a gimmick, but you know it's, sometimes it will work. I guess it's a bit silly. Okay, next let's talk about Ethros. So Ethros are really good in Skullgirls because they're like the hardest reset to like reversal out of, unless you have an invincible air super like Philia does. Uh, but most characters they just have to tech and they like can't do anything easy to escape it. So Ethros is pretty good. The easiest way to set up an Ethros is to do a roll launch and just jump up and grab them. You can either like just do it and then like delay and jump, or you can do the launch and stance cancel it first and then jump. Against double, you have to do the stance cancel because if you just delay it, like by the time you like try to jump up and grab her, she'll already be like close to the ground because she falls so fast. So um, against double, you have to stance cancel. So that's like off a raw launch, you can do this. Uh, you can also do it sometimes off of like an air string. If I can, let's see if I can get it. There we go. This like. It's kind of finicky, it's not as reliable as just doing off a roll launch, because first of all, it pretty much only works on light characters. They need to be high enough for you to be able to grab them. And like, sometimes you just... Sometimes the horizontal distance will be a factor as well. So you sort of need to be a gauge, you need to be able to gauge if you can get it or not. It's like a little bit easier in the corner, because they won't be able to move horizontally away from you. Yeah, you, know, you can do like that. But against like, non-lights, like not Philly, if I try to get Big Band, it's gonna be a... It's pretty much impossible on Big Man, as far as I know, just because, you know, he's too low. And the good thing about Ethros, what you need to do is you need to mix them up with burst baits. So, in situations where, like, they might, like, you can, like, condition them with throws, then once they try to, like, tech, you do a burst bait instead. And speaking of burst baits, let's talk about some burst baits. Now the most common way I do burst weights with Squiggly is to with her two light aerials. So like once you've already used a light aerial in the combo, you can either do it with a neutral jump or a jump away, and it'll work as a burst bait. So for example, in mid screen you can do this, you can do it with a light kick, you can like neutral jump it, and then it'll be a burst bait. Uh, you can do the same thing in the corner with both aerials. And then it depends. On light characters, you need to super jump away with it. Because, you know, they'll be higher up. And then, like, if you just normal jump away, you won't have enough distance, so you need to super jump. But against heavier characters, you don't need to. Like, I'll just demonstrate with Big Ben. Hang on, I did the wrong thing. So you just like this, do, 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 just need to jump away. Yeah, you know, and then get your punish, whatever you want. Uh, if you super jump away, what you need to do is you need to kind of need to do a dive kick so you get close, and then you can punish. So those are kind of like the good setups with the aerials. You can also do the same thing with like a roll launch if you've already used like the move, or if you're a max on dizzy, you can like do a burst fight like that. And kind of the reason why these are good is because all of these can be like mixed up with her resets, right? So, say you're like doing this with screen. I already established that you can do this, right? You can get a, like a low reset. Or sometimes you can get the grab, even. If I can maybe see if I can do it again. Right? So they'll be like, oh yeah, I need to tech, or I need to reversal. But then you trick them, and you do the burst fade. And then you get a massive punish. That's kind of why it's good. Uh, another thing you can do burst baits. So, like. You can do it like with a. Did I already show this one? I th I'm not sure if I did, but like you can, you can do this if I can do it right. After like a restand, once they're on the ground, you can jump away with um with a light punch. I find the easiest way to like punish burst baits from a jump away is just to do a roll mortis because it will reach them. Otherwise, the uh, the other things you can do is. You have to like sort of like go near them, like dash towards them and do like a heavy. Or you can do a silver core. That's like the easiest thing to do, but it's like really bad because it will scale the combo. So you don't, you don't want to do it if you can help it. It's better just to have the charge and so you can like do this. That's the best thing you can do. 
And it gets like, obviously you get like the counter hit mortis which does hella damage. Um, okay. So that's kind of burst space. Those are like the easy burst space you can do. There are some other burst space you can do. Like say if you're a max on Dizzy. I think I already showed this before. Because you can like, do like the sweep, which is a knockdown. You can kind of do the same thing with like a, a crouch heavy punch. Uh, you need to go far enough away for it to work, obviously. Okay, just believe me that you can do it. You see, I'm just not going far away enough because it's disjointed, so you can burst bait off it. Uh, this isn't like that good though because I think the sweep's okay, but if you like hold out the heavy punch, what they can do is they can burst it and then alpha counter and then like punish your heavy punch. So it's sometimes better to like do the heavy punch but then cancel it to stay safe. And then the way you can punish that is again, you can do. You know, you can do a mortis, you can do a silver cord. Especially like if they're at low health, then you can just let's just do a silver cord is fine because you know you'll be able to kill them anyway. Um, so that's kind of an okay thing to do. Another thing you can do is uh, let me see if I can demonstrate this. This might not work. That's also a burst bait. Is that at some spacings, like if you do like either a medium kick into an immediate heavy punch or a medium punch into a immediate heavy punch then like the the medium will trigger the undizzy and then the like the heavy punch will sort of move your hurtbox back so that you'll be burst safe and i think like the most reliable way to do the spacing is to do like after this then that's like that's the right spacing to do it and you do it and then it'll work so like sometimes you can do it but uh, it kind of depends like you can do it at other spacings like other setups of it like maybe if you're like at max on dizzy at the end of a combo you can like do this ground string and pretend like you're just doing a normal ground string. And then do that. That'll like and uh, that's burst safe. That's a good burst bait. And then there's one more setup I know about, which is that this only works on some characters. This is actually character specific. What you can do is like at max on dizzy, you can do a ground string, and if you're close enough, you can just jump away. Or, not necessarily Max on Dizzy, if you've used a Light Punch or if you're a Max on Dizzy, you can do this. But, this is character specific, because a lot of the time you won't be close enough to be able to hit them. Like, against Fortune it will never work. The characters that this works on are Philia, Fukua, Eliza, Double, Big Band, and Beowulf. You can do this. And that will still hit them. Like that. Okay. I think that's about all I have to say for Burst Baits. Okay, sorry, one more thing. I should point out that this thing I just showed you only works if you have charge. Because if you don't have charge, you won't have enough advantage. And then that won't combo, okay? So you can add that to your list of things that you need charge to do. Okay, now that's all I know about burst baits. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this guide is squiggly in a team. Or more specifically, Squiggly Big Band. Now, say you want to play Squiggly, right? And you're thinking, okay, so I want to play Squiggly. Now, which character should I pick to be my assists? Like, what's the best team I can make for Squiggly? Now, if you're going to play a duo, I believe there is a clear, correct answer to this. And that answer is Big Band. Now, Big Band, first of all, he has what I believe is Squiggly's best assist, which is Beating Stand. Now, Beating Stand is very good for Squiggly for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is the best reversal assist in the game which effectively covers Squiggly's bad defense. And you get a full combo of it, which is really cool. Uh, second, you can use it to get charge. It is one of the assists that you can use to get charge, so that's good. You can also use it to set up mid-screen double snaps, which I have already shown, I won't show again, but just know that you can do that. You can, since Big Man's so fat, you can kind of like hide behind him and use him as a meat shield to get charges. So, I guess that kind of applies to all of Big Man's assists, but like any assist with Big Man, he's like one of the best characters to be paired with Squiggly just because you can use him as a meat shield. And like also on that note is that since like Squiggly's got the narrowest hurtbox in the game, Big Man's got the widest hitbox in the game. Like, it kind of just like screws with the opponent's happy birthday sometimes. Like, sometimes like. Squiggly will just fall out because Big Bang will be so wide that like you're not going to be able to reach her. So that's really good. That's kind of just like a passive benefit that's really useful. And the last thing I want to talk about with Big Band is that you can do this. 
you can, if you do a sing, and you call B extend at the same time, Big Man will hit anywhere on the screen and bring them towards you, and you can get a full combo off it. Now, this looks like a gimmick. I know this like looks like there's no possible way that this can be a real strategy. It looks like super unsafe, right? I think it's actually better than you might think. Uh, it kind of like, there are ways to punish it, but if you use it smartly, then this is like a really good way if you don't have charge and you don't have meter to sort of like punish people from full screen. It's just to like, whenever there's like a vulnerability where they might not be expecting it, you just go boom. Okay, you can't do it in the corner. But you just go like boom. You get a full combo for it. This is actually really good. I think this is like actually like one of the really good things you can do with this team. Uh, obviously there might be some other assists that you can do with this. I think Beat Stand is probably the best assist to do it with, for uh, three reasons. One, massive hitbox, hits the entire screen. Two, it's invincible. And three, you can get a full combo off it. So I think this is like actually a really good strategy with this team. Uh, there are some vulnerabilities to it, like I mentioned. First of all, let's set the dummy to jump. So it'll hit them from the entire screen if they're on the ground. If they're in the air, it won't. So, like, but they have to be neutral jumping or jumping away for them to be able to avoid it. Like, if they're jumping forward, they'll get hit. Unless they're blocking. And, uh, this actually, like, is actually pretty safe on block if they block it. Uh, I think my, um, I think it's, uh, hang on, let me just sit back. I think it's minus two if they crouch block it, and plus two if they stand block it. So it's like actually pretty safe for Squiggly, unless, like, the situation you don't want to do this is if they're like right close to you, then don't do it. But if they're like far away, maybe if they like put like a meaty hitbox out or something that will like, once you pull them towards you, they'll hit like both characters, that could be a problem. But like, as long as you use this smartly, it's actually pretty good, I think. Uh, what else was I talking about? Okay, so those are kind of like all the applications for Beat Extend, I think. And now you might be wondering, okay, well what about... Ikoku Man uses A-Train, right? Um, yeah, I guess you can use A-Train if you want. I think, like... I think Beat Extend is better than A-Train. Like, I think A-Train is the kind of thing where, like... You can do it if you're, like, really smart and you, like, really know what you're doing. But for most general purposes, I would highly recommend using Beat Extend. And well, what about... you might think, what about Brass, right? Uh, Brass is okay. It's like actually good in some matchups. I personally don't use it. I prefer to just always have Beat Extend. Just because like, I don't know, part of it is because like, I can't be bothered like practicing Brass setups and like remembering which assist I have and what I can do when. I find like Beat Extend is like always useful, whereas Brass is only useful in some matchups. But absolutely, if you like play Squiggly Big Band and you like are thinking, oh hey, maybe in some matchups I should pick another assist, yeah, you can go for it. But generally I recommend Beat Extend. I think it's really good. Uh, so another thing you can do with Squiggly Big Band is that they have pretty good DHC synergy. You can do a, an SBO with Squiggly, and combo into an SSJ, and then you can actually combo off of it with Big Band. So what you can use this for is that you can either do it at the end of a combo, suppose like, actually I'll make it max on Dizzy for a sec. Do something like this. So you go like at the end of a combo, and when they're at maximum dizzy, you can actually also get a burst bait off them, which is pretty cool. Or say you're squiggly and you have two bars, right? You can kind of use it as like a two-bar reversal. Is that like because like normally squiggly's reversals are kind of crappy, but if you DHC into Big Band, SSJ is like a godlike reversal, and then since the SBO will be there, you'll be able to combo off it. So you can like do this, you know, kind of like I just showed, and then you can like combo off it right there, right? Uh, from the other direction, suppose you're Big Band, right? Suppose that you have just done like a YOLO Brass or like a Wake Up freaking, you know, SSJ or something. Suppose you've done something unsafe, right? What you can do is you can... Or maybe, if you haven't done something unsafe, there's like two ways, there's like two applications for it. First of all, if you've done something unsafe, say they've blocked something. Uh, let me just let them block. Block. Always. If you do something unsafe, you can do like... This. This is a safe DHC. Although, actually, 
I don't know, if they like don't get hit by the SBO, it's a lot less safe. I think it's, I'm not sure. What I'll do instead is I'll make it. Frick. I'll make uh, I'll make her like jab person. I wonder if that'll work. Uh, let's set it to as reversal. Yep, okay. So what I'll do is I'll do an SSJ. Okay, it's like pretty safe. Although, like, sometimes it won't be safe. Also, it's always vulnerable to alpha counters. Like, if they alpha can see, they're like the SBO hit, so she couldn't do anything. But they can alpha counter this, so it's like... But that's kind of like a general principle against, like, every safe DHC is that they're all susceptible to alpha counters, pretty much. So, Squeaker has a safe DHC, which is really good for Big Man, because he has lots of unsafe moves. Uh, the other thing you can do is if, uh, say I make them not block. Say maybe you did like a YOLO brass, but it actually hits, which means it was not YOLO, it was actually calculated. Then you can do an SBO. Okay, I fucked it up. <laughs> Alright, let's try again. You have a YOLO brass. If you have squiggly, you can actually combo off it. Like so. So that's like one other thing, good thing you can do with this team. So that's kind of like the good DHC synergy with Squig Band, is that like, if you do a DHC, like the Brass will, I mean the um, like the SBO will hit and then Big Bang can get a combo off it, or in the other direction the SBO will hit and Squiggly can get a combo off it, or you can use it as a safe DHC, and you know, like that, all that stuff. Okay, so that's basically Squiggly Big Band in a nutshell, that's kind of the stuff I do with this team. Uh, now you might be thinking, okay, so maybe I don't want to play a duo, maybe I want to play a trio, right? If you play a trio, you have a little bit more versatility, obviously, because you have two assists. So, like, instead of just having one assist that's really good, you can sort of have, like, two assists that are kind of good, and you can, like, make it a bit work a bit better. But I would still recommend one of the assists being Big Band, just because it's, like, Squiggly Big Band is a really good pairing. And you might be thinking, okay, well, I fucking hate Big Band. He's stupid. I don't want to play him. Well, you know, you can do whatever you want. If you, if you want to, like, play some other team, absolutely go for it. You do whatever works for you. This is my opinion. Is that I think Squiggly Big Band is probably like if you're gonna play Squiggly, because Squiggly is like we've established, is that she's kind of not that strong. She needs a team to be built around her, and I think if you want to give yourself the best chance, you might as well just do that. You might as well just do pick the best partner for her. But like I said, you know, it's a team game. He's supposed to be fun and creative. He's supposed to pick whichever characters you want and find just strategies to make it work. So if you can make some other team work, absolutely go for it. I'm not really going to spend too long in this, but I should just briefly mention, suppose you don't want to play Big Band, what are your other options? So first of all, Squiggly is a character who can benefit from a lockdown assist, because you know, her moves are kind of easy to push block, so a lockdown assist can definitely not work. But I don't really know much about the applications of a lockdown assist, because I've never played a character who has a lockdown assist, I don't really have much experience using it, but this is something that I've heard is okay for Squiggly, so I thought I'd just point it out. And so you can use like someone like Cerebella, who has Cerecopter, which is a really good lockdown assist. That's something you can do. Uh, I guess another thing you could consider is that since Squiggly is a character who needs meter, if you have a character that's like really good at building meter, that would probably be better to pair with Squiggly. And on you know on the flip side, if you have a character that like uses meter a lot, that's going to be not a good character to pair with Squiggly. So that's just like some quick thoughts. I don't really know much about this kind of thing, so I won't really say anything else. Okay, so we've talked about the assists that are good for Squiggly. Now let's talk about what you should pick as Squiggly. Now first, I think Squiggly has like three decent options that like most people will go for. The uh, first is this one, Crashing Half Punch. Uh, this is good because obviously it's a low, it's disjointed, it's kind of like a pseudo lockdown. You can do like high-low resets with like Big Band, and you can get a full combo off it. And it's like, sometimes with Big Band actually what you can do is like you can like sort of put Squiggly out and like sort of like cover her with your own hurt box and then like but the fire will still be sticking out so like sometimes they'll like if they're trying to like do an aerial on big band then you can block it and then they'll like land on the fire that's something you can do uh the, yeah the main reason why i think this is this is because i like doing like cheesy you know high low pseudo unblockables you know like that which you can easily combo off of uh so that's crash hard punch the other good assist you can pick a uh, charger switch to really quick that's uh... Oh wait, I didn't pick the assist. <laughs> okay, yeah. Here's it. Uh, Dragon Fight. Okay, so the other thing you can do is Dragon Fight. Now, Dragon Fight is like kind of okay. 
Uh, basically, it's like a pseudo horizontal lockdown assist, but it's like not one of the better ones. Like, it's not going to be better than Hairball or H Bomber or whatever else. It's like kind of just like a usable one, but not like a great one. Uh, with Big Ban, you can use it to do combo off Brass in the corner, which I'll see if I can demonstrate this. Okay, I messed it up. I'll try one more time. There we go. So that's something you can do. That like gets you a little bit of extra damage in the corner if you use this assist. As opposed to like Crouch Hard Punch, which, you know, that won't work. So, something you can like use this with Big Man with is that, um, say if you like call it and then do a Brass. Actually, I'll make them block. Ah, uh, block type. Always. Whoops. Damn it. Block type. Always. Is that like, if you call it and then do a brass, it kind of makes the brass a bit safer. But like, this is like, it's kind of okay, but it's not as good as if you did it with like other assists like Hairball or H Bomber, like I said. But it's usable. This is like one, the other good assist that like a lot of Squiggly Big Band players can pick. Uh, the last assist that you could pick with Squiggly is. Uh, center stage, right? And center stage, like, it's kind of like the gimmicky option. It's kind of like the non-standard option. Because there are some tricky things you can do with it, but you need, like, specific setups. It's like something that's only useful in specific situations. It's not, like, all the time, right? And uh, I don't really know much about the uses for this assist, but... This is like something that you could pick and do some stuff with, because this is really the only assist that Squiggly has that's actually like really unique. The other two are kind of just like, you know, standard-ish, like she's got like a standard lockdown, but also it's low so it's okay. She's got like a pretty usable, serviceable like horizontal lockdown, but this one, this one's actually like unique and there's unique things you can do with it. Uh, I won't talk about that, what I will do is I'll put an annotation for this video that Mike Z made which you can look at some of the potential applications and as you can sort of think of it like maybe for your own team if you can think of things you can use this assist for absolutely go for it but for me personally, you know, you can, I, I stick with the Crouch Hard Punch, that's the one I like but I don't have any strong feelings, like, you know, all three are kind of good options okay, so that's, I think that's all I have to say about Squiggly's assists which means that's all I have to say for this entire guide, so Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, I hope you learned something. I'm trying to taunt. Oh my god. There we go. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Great! Digger!